We're back again doing another video that's probably way too long. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is a show that I've watched for years and I've always kind of wondered myself, which episode do I think is best? Honestly, it's an answer that would probably have been different at basically any time you asked me. There's so many absolutely fantastic episodes that it might be hard to actually pick just one as the definitive best. At least in my opinion. So let's really get into it. Let's rewatch the entire series and rank them from what I think is the worst episode to the best episode. But I mean, come on, it's always sunny. Even the worst episode is likely to have some hilarious moments and insanely quotable lines. So similar to what I did in previous videos where I ranked every episode in a series, let's go over what exactly I'll be doing in this video. I'll be going through each and every episode and giving my thoughts on them and then ranking them from best to worst by season. And obviously this is all my opinion, I'm not looking at IMDb or taking the scores that an episode might have into account. I'm also not going to be giving each episode an individual score because I don't really like the idea of scores like that, and I'm also not very good at them. I fully expect that I'd get to the point where I'd be giving videos one of three scores, a one, a five, or a ten, and that doesn't really get across what I want to say about each episode, and could honestly take away from my final thoughts on each episode. I also won't be going into an incredible amount of detail for each episode, but there will be ones where I talk about the plot more than others. It'll be kind of dependent on the episode and what all is actually going on in it. There's just going to be episodes where I don't have a ton to say. Alright, let's get into it. The gang gets racist. Oh, okay, so this video is immediately getting demonetized. So this episode is kind of weird to me in that it doesn't really feel like Always Sunny. But the one thing you really can say about the show is that it's timid, because holy hell they come out of the gate swinging. They immediately set the precedent that there won't be topics that they're afraid to cover, and I guess you have to give them credit for that. But ultimately, I feel like this episode is definitely on the weaker side of things, especially when I know what the show will eventually become. It makes coming back to its humble beginnings pretty difficult. Dennis really getting to the bar becoming a gay bar because of his extreme narcissism is something that will be defined later in the series is pretty funny, but ultimately I think this is a very weird and slow start to the series. Charlie wants an abortion. Charlie apparently might have a son from a fling that he had some years prior, and now that the child and his mother have reappeared, Charlie's trying to prove that he isn't the father. Mac and Dennis are both using pro and anti-abortion rallies to try and get with women, and in typical season 1 fashion, Dee is also kind of just there. This episode feels like a step down from the previous one, I find it less funny and the overall plot feels like it probably could have been stronger. In fact, it feels like if this episode premise were just a few seasons later, it could have been much better. If it had the typical Always Sunny ability to take off the wall plots and turn the weirdness up to 10, it probably would work a lot better. But this episode is going at the bottom of our so far very short list. Underage drinking, a national concern. I think this is probably the best of the three episodes so far. The bar has a ton of high school kids who have been sneaking into the bar to drink. And by sneaking into the bar to drink, I mean Mac never carded anyone despite technically being the bouncer. But the gang ultimately decides that the kids are probably safer drinking there than out somewhere that might be sketchy, like a bar in Philly with a bunch of older people who end up, like, hooking up with some of them. Yeah, this episode is really, really weird, and some of the characters feel like they still aren't fully fleshed out. But I do think this episode works better and feels more coherent than the previous few episodes have. Best of the season so far, but I highly, highly doubt that it'll be the best of the series. Charlie has cancer. This episode is kind of a special one in that it originally served as the show's pilot, back before they even wanted to make a show and were just a couple of friends making a funny short film. And I think because of that, this episode feels like its pieces fit together much better than previous ones. So Charlie has cancer, or at least he's lying about having cancer to try and get with the waitress. We get to see Charlie's apartment for the first time, which is cool, and the majority of the episode is fairly funny. The Carmen stuff doesn't play super well anymore, and it's easy to forget just how old the show actually is and how much stuff has really changed since then. Probably the best episode so far. Gun Fever This is a 
bit of a strange episode that kind of suffers because I know that they handled the idea behind the plot much better down the line, but I'll do my best to judge this episode without taking the future one into account. The bar has been broken into, and the safe has been stolen. So the gang does the most logical and American thing they can and go get a gun. Mac, Dennis, and Charlie all fall in love with a gun, and there's some pretty funny moments later throughout the episode, like Charlie accidentally threatening his landlord. It turns out that the random guy that Dee was dating is actually the person who broke into the bar, and he does it again at the end of the episode. It's alright, nothing fantastic. It's weird seeing how many people Dee dated this early in the series, considering how the show treats her character later on, but that's, you know, whatever. Anyways, middle of the list so far. The gang finds a dead guy. This is my favorite episode of the season so far, and this really feels very indicative of what the show will eventually become. It takes an already insane premise, cranks it up to 11, and has the gang being just all around kind of insane dealing with it. The gang finds a dead guy in the bar, so Mac and Dennis both act like they were his friends in order to get with his granddaughter. Dee and Charlie go to visit Dennis and Dee's Pop Pop and find out that he was... Uh, a bad guy in World War II. Seeing Charlie wearing one of the hats in uniform and watching cartoons is the kind of absolute insanity and hilarity that I think eventually makes the show work. A pretty strong episode. Charlie got molested. I think the premise for this episode is really funny, but I think it might be a bit too heavy handed. The gang finds out that a former gym teacher of theirs is being sued for sexual misconduct with some of his former students. This episode gives us a lot of new recurring characters and some great character moments. We're introduced to the McPoyles, Charlie's mom, and Charlie's uncle. And you'll be dealing with me today. In the scene where Mac is trying to get the coach to make a pass at him because he's jealous that he apparently wasn't an attractive enough child is hilarious but I don't know if these parts are enough to drag this episode out of a hard mid-tiering. A pretty good end to the season. This season is really, really weird. Mostly in that it doesn't feel like the rest of the show. Like it feels like they have a base understanding of what they want the show to be, but they aren't quite at the point where they're successfully pulling it off. The air of satire is there, but the execution behind the jokes and the storylines just doesn't quite match up with what they're going for. I very rarely find myself wanting to go back and watch any of the episodes from the first season, and I think that speaks volumes for a show that I've watched as much as Always Sunny. I know it gets better from here, there's no way the show would still be going if it didn't, but that doesn't make it much easier to get through. Anyways, on to the next season, and some new characters. Charlie gets crippled. So let's just come right out and say it. Danny DeVito saved the show in more ways than one actually. Not only does the show significantly improve from this point onward, but FX just straight up told them that the cast actually needed to find a big name actor to bring onto the show. And hot dang does Danny DeVito as Frank Reynolds, Dennis and Dee's father, fit perfectly into the show's dynamic. This episode does a really good job of introducing his character to us and showing the depths his character is already willing to sink. And I think having Frank spend most of his time with Mac and Charlie instead of Dennis and Dee is a good way to have him integrate with the gang and begin his weird relationship with Charlie. The episode itself feels like a huge step up from previous episodes in terms of both storytelling and comedy. Charlie going off the rails as a Vietnam vet is hilarious, as is Mac just kind of throwing the stripper off his back after he loses the race. Even Dee, for maybe the first time so far, is given some hilarious parts. A good episode, best of the series so far. And is this the first time we see Charlie's green jacket? That's cool. The gang goes jihad. So. Frank has been introduced, but unlike basically every other member of the gang, he needs something of a reason to actually stay around and be involved in the gang's activities. So in this episode, Ari, an Israeli businessman, claims to own the land the bar is on and is kicking the gang out. So the gang puts forward some plans that eventually ends with them actually burning down the building next door. The juxtaposition of the building going up in flames and the gang just kind of singing back in the bar immediately following just makes me laugh every time I see it. And Frank ends up buying the bar, which starts the kind of mini background arc of Frank trying to make the bar successful for a time. Overall, I like this episode. I think the series is starting to really find itself. I'll put this just above Charlie Gets Crippled. 
Dennis and D go on welfare. So, continuing the Frank runs the bar subplot, Dennis and D, now sick of him, quit the bar to follow their dreams and go on unemployment. And they find out they could actually make more on welfare than they could by working at the bar. Capitalism. But to keep on getting money, they get addicted to crack and try to get on welfare. In the B-plot, Charlie and Mac go out and spend a bunch of Frank's money that he's hiding in Charlie's bank account. Which apparently he has. I absolutely love this episode. I think this feels like the first time absolutely everything that they do throughout works. There really aren't any points that feel slow and everything is serving the greater plot. Best episode of the series so far. Mac bangs Dennis's mum. This is yet another absolute banger of an episode, which is probably something I'm going to be saying more and more as we get further into the series. Anyways, Mac bangs Dennis's mom in this episode. Dennis tries to get out of doing Charlie work by threatening to sleep with a waitress who Charlie is hopelessly in love with. But what I really, really like in this episode is Charlie's weird master plan to both break down Dennis and make the waitress realize how absolutely terrible he is. It's weird seeing Charlie take this kind of mastermind role, and it's funny when Charlie realizes he kind of overlooked that Dennis could actually sleep with his mom. But I think this episode works pretty well for the most part. I put this one below the gang goes jihad, and above Charlie gets crippled. Hundred dollar baby. After the rest of the gang abandons her during a mugging, Frank decides to teach Dee how to box in order to defend herself. After being made fun of by Frank's former rival, Dee and Frank put together a match between Dee and the rival's daughter. Dee, of course, begins taking steroids and eventually kind of goes into a rage. In the other plot, Dennis and Mac decide to train Charlie for underground fighting because of how tough he is. And by training, I mean mainly just hitting him with stuff and having him drag a car behind him for a bit. And Charlie ends up taking some steroids and eventually kind of goes into a rage. I like this episode a lot, but I don't think it's the best of the season. I'd put this below the gang goes jihad, but above Mac bangs Dennis's mom. The gang gives back. In one of the rare moments where the gang actually has to face consequences for their past actions, the gang is teaching inner city kids how to play basketball and Charlie has to go to Alcoholics Anonymous and then ends up being the referee for said basketball game. Frank ends up betting on a lot of stuff that's kind of his through line throughout the episode. Overall, I think the episode is pretty funny, but I can't really think of anything in particular that jumped out at me while I was watching through it. It's an alright episode, I'll put this above Charlie Gets Crippled. The gang exploits a miracle. So I haven't watched this episode in a while, and it's kind of jarring seeing Cricket before his very drawn out downward spiral. In this episode, the gang finds a water stain in the bar that kind of looks like the Virgin Mary. And so, of course, the gang decides to make as much money off it as they can. Charlie being received much better than Mac, despite Mac's love of Christianity, is pretty hilarious. I love Charlie's work as a preacher. He absolutely kills it in this episode. I also love seeing Dennis going through his fast. Apparently, Glenn Howerton, who played Dennis, just lost too much weight around this time, so they kind of went with it and made fun of it. At least that's according to the Always Sunny podcast, which you should go listen to, by the way. It's honestly hilarious listening to the cast recount their experiences around the episodes. Anyways, one of the weaker episodes of the season, I'd put this right below Charlie Has Cancer. The gang runs for office. The gang has decided to enter the political realm, mostly just so they can get bribed into dropping out of said race. But, as we've seen in the series, at least so far, the gang doesn't exactly have a ton of tact. The episode, I think, is very close to being much better than it actually is. There's a ton of moments in this episode that are hilarious. Dennis reading Charlie's campaign speech in particular really sticks out to me. Charlie's gibberish writing and Dennis's delivery are both absolutely hysterical. And how Frank does Dee's makeup is fairly funny as well. But in this instance, I don't think all the disjointed jokes come together nearly as well as they could. But overall, I think it's still a pretty good episode. Charlie goes America all over everybody's ass. This episode itself is really funny, but overall, I think it has the weakest through line that we've seen this season. But again, ha tang, this episode really does have its hilarious moments. Like Charlie's song was improvised, Rock Flag and Eagle, which is fantastic. The McPoyles are as fun and insane as always. She wants to show you her boobies. What? No, no, no. 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 Trust me, 
They're top notch. As is the anything goes idea for the bar. The bar turning from a fun New Orleans type bar to a terrifying Philly bar is hilarious. And the ending is surprisingly dark, with Frank and his gambling buddies playing Russian roulette in the basement and it not going super well. But I don't think the plot lines connect enough for the through line to really feel like it fully paid off. In terms of this season, it feels like it's probably on the weaker side overall. Dennis and D get a new dad. This episode really, really dates the series because Dennis and Dee find the MySpace page of a man claiming to be their actual father. But this episode also starts another ongoing joke that runs for a long time in the series, that while Frank might not be Dennis and Dee's father, he might be Charlie's. That'll come up a lot in the series, and we'll talk about the definitive answer in like an hour and a half or so. This episode feels like it really marks Frank's true descent down to the gang's level. Like, he was kind of a dick throughout the season, but from this point onward, he's just kind of unrestrained and feels like he truly fits in with everyone else. That aside, I think the episode itself works fairly well, and the reveal of Frank dating Charlie's mom is pretty funny. A pretty good episode, I'll put it below Mac bangs Dennis's mom, and above Charlie gets crippled. Season 2 was a tremendous step up from Season 1. For starters, the season has episodes that I routinely want to go back and watch, which I can't really say about the first season. Frank is the perfect addition to the show, and while his character is much, much more restrained than he will be in just like a season or so, he still feels like a natural part of the gang. In basically every conceivable way, Frank really did save the show. His presence allowed the show to continue on and mature into what we eventually see it become. Speaking of which, on to season three. The gang finds a dumpster baby. This is a pretty solid way to kick the season off. The gang, as the episode title hints at, finds a baby in the dumpster in the alley outside of the bar. So Mac and Dee decide that they're going to raise the baby and try to turn it into a baby model. Charlie and Frank go off to become trash people, like literal people enthralled with trash, not the usual trash that they are. And Dennis goes off on what may be his first truly psychotic warpath. It's a great episode, and this is one of the first times this early in the series that every member of the gang feels completely realized. Like, Frank is just as gross, disgusting, and weird as Charlie. Dee is just as terrible as Mac. Dennis is somewhat tethered to reality. We already know the characters, so they're really able to ramp up the insanity with them. A good episode, I'll put this right below Dennis and Dee go on welfare. The gang gets invincible. You've probably noticed by this point, but I haven't really talked about it yet. But something that early Always Sunny liked to do was take a movie premise and kind of say, what if our characters did that? In this example, the gang is doing the invincible story. You know, from the movie, in Invincible. Anyways, they're playing football. Dee wants to prove that she can make it further than Mac and Dennis, and she kind of does by showing that she's an okay kicker. In the B-plot, Charlie and Frank do acid and hang around the McPoyles. This episode is really great. It blesses us with the introduction of Green Man, Charlie's alter ego where he dresses in a green bodysuit. Frank being trapped in a garbage can because he's too high is peak Frank and absolutely hilarious. As is the guy who's definitely not Donovan McNabb who shows up and tells them to eat at McDonald's. Fantastic episode, best of the series so far. Uh, remember guys, real champs, eat at McDonald's. I'm loving it. Can I get the check? Dennis and Dee's mom is dead. This episode, as you might have guessed, kills off Dennis and Dee's mother, which is probably for the best. I like Ann Archer, the actress who played Barbara Reynolds, but I think that the character of Barbara doesn't feel like she fits in with the rest of the cast. It's funny hearing from Dennis or Dee what terrible things Barbara has done in the past, but it never really comes through as humorous when we actually see her. And while they're getting rid of one recurring character, we're instead introduced to the lawyer, who we'll see pop up from time to time through the rest of the series. The best part of this episode is definitely the bicep flyer, which is an absolutely hilarious and iconic part of Always Sunny. But outside of that, this feels like a pretty down the middle episode. The gang gets held hostage. The McPoyles are fun characters, but I think it's hard for them to really carry an episode like this. 
Yes, the gang is obviously still our main focus as they're taken hostage by the McPoyles, but this much of the brothers' weirdness might be a little too much. Seeing the gang's infighting and plotting as soon as they're able to is pretty on brand, and I love Frank crawling through the vents. But I don't think those points alone are enough to make this episode anything more than an average episode of Always Sunny, which is still a fantastic episode of anything else. I'll be putting this between Charlie Goes America and the gang finds a dead guy. The Aluminium Monster vs Fatty Magoo Something we really haven't seen yet in the series is how far off the rails Dennis can go when met with even the smallest amount of rejection. This episode is the first real example of that, and we'll see that trait explored more as the series continues. Anyways, Dee reconnects with one of her only friends from high school who's lost weight and is now successful. Dee tries to make a dress to sell to her, Dennis tries his best to also do that, Charlie is, well, Calm down, son, it's just a drawing, not the real thing. And Frank shows Mac how to run a sweatshop. I'm not the biggest fan of this episode, but I can definitely understand why some people would put it further up on their list. But as for me, I'll be placing it slightly on the lower end. Right below, Charlie has cancer. The gang solves the North Korea situation. I don't really like this episode too much. The Kim Jong-il parody is kind of weird and feels sort of out of place. We are introduced to one of the show's most important characters in the series here though, the Duster. Charlie having a genuine connection with a 10 year old girl is both very funny and pretty disgusting, which is pretty on brand for the show to be fair. This is another episode I'll be placing pretty low on the list below the previous episode. The gang sells out. What would the gang be without the bar? Well, this episode kind of threatens us with that reality. I mean, obviously they aren't going to actually sell the bar, but it's interesting seeing what could possibly happen. The waitress makes a terrible mistake, or rather three terrible mistakes, by hiring Dennis, Dee, and Charlie to the restaurant she's managing. Of course, they're absolutely terrible workers. The episode is fairly funny. Frank's gang of elderly men who are probably just a 50s doo-wop group is a pretty funny premise, but I don't think it's the strongest episode overall. The two plots feel like they really have nothing in common, but they do have their moments. Mid-tier. Frank sets Sweet D on fire. I really like this episode. Seeing Frank, Mac, and Charlie team up to become famous reporters is pretty funny. Maybe more so to me because I worked in news for a bit. Charlie not taking off the lens cap for the camera because he already taped the flashlight to the camera as well as how absolutely sweaty and terrible Mac looks throughout are both hilarious. Dee gets lit on fire twice as well and is having a lot of trouble actually saving kittens, and Charlie is also there ready to murder some cats. The episode is pretty strong honestly, I'd say one of the strongest of the season. I'll put it right below the gang finds a dumpster baby. Sweet Dee's dating a retarded person. This is one of the first episodes that really lets Dee put forward just how absolutely terrible and not compassionate she can be. As soon as Dennis puts it in her head that she's dating someone who's actually mentally handicapped, her affection towards the person basically evaporates. And she doesn't really do anything to confirm or deny if it's true, she just assumes it is and breaks things off, before trying to get back together with him and getting dumped again later. It really puts on full display that Dee is fully capable of descending to the depths that the rest of the gang has routinely been wallowing in. A pretty good episode overall. Mac is a serial killer. This is another one of those episodes that I don't really think has aged super well. Mac is dating someone who's trans, and the gang thinks he's a serial killer because he's being so sketchy about it. I think most of the jokes don't really land. It's kind of funny seeing Dennis instantly go full serial killer mode as soon as he and Dee start stalking the waitress, but I don't like or have a ton to say about this episode. I'll put it below the aluminum monster and above the gang solves the North Korea situation. Dennis looks like a registered sex offender. I'm not sure if this is a nitpick or not, but this episode feels kind of weird to me because Dennis is a sex offender, right? Like, we haven't gotten to it yet in the series, and maybe he isn't technically at this point, but we see him go down some pretty dark paths in the future. Anyways, the premise of the episode is fairly funny. D getting Dennis jumped by some fathers at a park stands out to me as something I found really funny. Another meh episode, to be honest. I'll put this right above the last one. The gang gets whacked, 
part one. This is the series first two-parter. I'm going to cover each part as a separate episode because I think each episode kind of brings different things to the table. For the most part, I think this episode is on the weaker side of the season. Of course, there's funny parts. The nose clams bit in particular is hilarious, but it feels tonally inconsistent with the rest of the series. Not the best episode. I'm putting this just above the gang solves the North Korea situation. The gang gets whacked, part two. So despite what I literally just said about the episodes bringing slightly different things to the table, this episode has more of the same problems that the previous had. It probably could have just been one episode to be honest. In the ending, where despite Frank saying he's not bailing everyone out, that basically just kind of ends up happening anyways, because Dennis sells Frank's pimp chalice. And of course, in a little bit in the series, we'll see Frank throwing a ton of money around to help the gang. Cricket makes another appearance and is just way worse off than he was, something that'll continue on. Another pretty weak episode. I'll put this just below the last. Bums. Making a mess all over the city. This episode has a lot more going for it than some of the previous few. Mac and Dee go off to create slash join a vigilante style group. And Frank, Dennis, and Charlie go to get a junkyard dog to protect the alley from bums, uh, making a mess. Though they end up with a sweet junkyard cat instead. Frank's scheme to get free hot dogs and his willingness to cut people out to keep it going is quintessential Frank. The plot itself is pretty boring, but I think they do a fairly good job of finding funny situations for the gang to deal with throughout. I'll put this above Frank set Sweet D on fire. The gang dances their asses off. This is a fantastic episode. Charlie's illiteracy leads to the bar being put up as the prize for a dance marathon. So this episode really just revolves around the gang all trying to win the bar for themselves and to keep it from falling into someone else's hands. All the backstabbing and schemes and dance-offs and infighting is hilarious and is peak always sunny. There's honestly not a ton else to say about it. It's a hilarious episode from start to finish and a fantastic way to send the season off. This is a season of very high highs and pretty low lows. It's the longest season of the show, and I think there's definitely a reason for that. All of these shorter seasons kind of feel like all of their episodes are more polished, and that leads to a better overall product. But here it feels like they're stretching out some ideas for entire episodes, what it may have been a one-off bit or something. Still, the season has some of the best episodes that we've seen, and it feels like the show's really found itself. And we've still got a lot of series to go. On to season four. Mac and Dennis. Manhunters. This episode has two pretty good plot lines going on. In one plot, Dennis and Mac decide they're going to hunt down Cricket. In the other, Charlie and Dee try to figure out what kind of meat they've eaten after Frank told them it was human meat. Both plot lines are very funny, obviously. Cricket being weirdly good at parkour for whatever reason is very funny, as is Frank confusing his life with Rambo which is probably my favorite part of the episode, honestly. A good episode and a solid start to the season. I'll put this above bums making a mess all over the city. The gang solves the gas crisis. I like this episode and I feel like it's a step up from even the fun that was the previous episode. I really like the idea of the gang getting pretty meta with their dynamic, trying to figure out which part of the group each of them are. The scenes of them stepping over each other to try to fill different roles are great. I love Mac, Charlie, and Dennis all taking their shirts off to seduce the banker. And the poor guy who keeps getting his car destroyed by the gang is funny as well, with the gang eventually accidentally blowing it up. Another really great episode. I'll put this right above the last. America's Next Top Paddy's Billboard Model Contest. Uh-oh, this episode got removed. What's he gonna rate it? Talk about edgy. Eh, it's okay. The plot is pretty jumbled and it feels kind of all over the place. Dennis's rant to Frank is pretty funny, but there's not a ton to say about this episode. I know part of the joke with this episode is, oh man, look how offensive this is, but it doesn't really work for me in terms of humor. Pretty meh episode. I'll put this below Charlie Goes America all over everyone's ass and above the gang gets held hostage. Max banging the waitress. This episode is really, really weird in that both Frank and Dee aren't in it. It's actually kind of jarring having an episode revolving entirely around Charlie, Mac, and Dennis. Max trying to hook up with the waitress who is using him to get her sex tape back from Dennis. 
The friendships between Mac, Charlie, and Dennis are all placed front and center. It's funny and weird seeing Dennis so desperate to be Charlie's best friend. That's not a side we typically see from him. And Charlie just kind of ignoring him is funny as well. But that's really all I can say about this episode. There's not a lot going on. I'm putting it right above Mac is a serial killer. Mac and Charlie Die, Part 1 This is another two-parter, and I think it's handled at least a bit better here than it was the last time. The pacing is still kind of weird because I don't really think they're used to doing two-parters. Anyways, Mac and Charlie decide to fake their death because they think that Mac's father is going to murder them, which is fair considering they did try to keep him in prison. The glory hole bit is pretty funny, and Dennis's debauchery is on full display throughout these two episodes. Charlie's scream when Mac doesn't jump out of the car when he's driving into a wall always makes me laugh. I'm not sure if it's actually that funny or if it just hits my funny bone in a weird way. This episode has its moments, but I don't think it's terribly strong. Mac and Charlie Die, Part 2 This episode is the gang dealing with the fallout of Mac and Charlie faking their deaths. Dennis gets a roommate and the two of them get really freaky for a time. Frank goes off the deep end. It's kind of nice actually seeing how much he really does love Charlie. And Dee eventually figures everything out and joins Mac and Charlie. I like this episode probably less than the last to be honest. Uh, pretty average again. Who pooped the bed? I was hoping I'd be able to get away with not talking about poop jokes. But here, here we, we go, go again. again. An entire episode based around it. But I guess as the episode says itself, It's not the poop, it's the mystery behind the poop. What is it with series taking poop jokes and crafting the best episodes around them? That happened with Bob's Burgers too. I think like the series says, it's not about the poop, it's about the mystery. This episode is fantastic. The scene of them at the lab having the poop dissected and all of the really, really weird stuff in it being inconclusive as to whose it is is so funny that I can't really put it into words. I laughed the entire time rewatching this episode and then the ending hit, where Frank just admits to it and simply says, poop is funny. Is it me? Am I the one who's wrong? Let me know in the comments. Paddy's Pub, the worst bar in Philadelphia. Here's the episode that it feels like every series that revolves around a business has to do. The business gets a bad review and they take things into their own hands. The gang, or I guess just Charlie, ends up kidnapping the guy who wrote the review, and they end up having to kidnap another guy as well. The double kidnapping plotline is okay and shows the gang's escalation pretty well. A good episode, I'll put it below the gang solves the gas crisis. Dennis Reynolds, an erotic life. This episode itself is pretty good, but it contains in it probably my absolute favorite moment in any episode of the series. There's this scene where Charlie is explaining his weird nighttime ritual of drinking beer, huffing glue, and eating cat food to make himself sick and want to fall asleep. As soon as he's done and lays down, Frank runs into the room, doesn't say a thing aside from grunts the entire time, and wolfs down a can of cat food and lays in bed. I don't know what it is about the scene, but I laugh at it every time I even think about it. My only problem with this episode is I don't really like the trippy scenes like the one with Sinbad and Rob Thomas. Wait, what? That's such a random cameo. It's a really good episode overall, above the gang finds a dumpster baby. Sweet D has a heart attack. After D has a heart attack, the gang decides that they need to take their health into consideration. D and Dennis try to get healthy, and Charlie and Mac get jobs to get health insurance. The Charlie and Mac subplot is definitely the highlight of the episode. I mean, Pepe Sylvia is one of the most iconic moments in the entirety of the show. Dennis and D are fairly funny in their own right in this episode, but Mac and Charlie really steal the show in this one. Meanwhile, Frank is just kind of wandering around super high the whole time. An absolutely fantastic episode. Top of the list so far. The gang cracks the Liberty Bell. Well, this season had a pretty good run. This episode isn't great. What if the gang were in Philly during the revolution and cracked the Liberty Bell doesn't really even sound like it would make a good episode. And while I appreciate them taking risks on new episode and format ideas, it doesn't really pay off here. This is at the bottom of the list. The Gang Gets Extreme, Home Makeover Edition. This is a forgettable episode, in that I regularly forget it exists. Not because it's bad, but because it's neither bad nor good, it's just kinda there. 
And that's sad because this might be one of the worst things the gang has done. Yes, they've destroyed buildings and vehicles in the past, but this time they break into a family's home, kidnap them, hold them hostage, and burn their home to the ground. Yes, the family gets a much better home after the fact, but that doesn't change what the gang has done. Overall, I'm gonna put this towards the middle of the list. The Nightman Cometh. What can I say about this episode? It's a masterpiece. It's glorious. It's hilarious the entire way through. This episode might actually get better every single time I watch it. And I've watched it a ton of times. It gives us some of the most quoted lines from the series, and every scene just builds this episode up further and further. They even did this actual musical live. It's glorious. Fantastic the whole way through. Best of the series so far. I love this season. It has some of my favorite episodes. If last season was where the show really learned to walk, this is where it learned to run. There are a few misses here and there, as you'd expect from just about any series, but the show is reaching new heights in comedy. I remember watching the season for the first time, and it was maybe the hardest I remember laughing at any show to that point. It's amazing for basically the whole way through. Let's see if the next season can keep it going. The gang exploits the mortgage crisis. This is yet another really good episode of the series. And look at that, we're widescreen now. So much more room for jokes. This is a great continuation of the heights that the show achieved last season. It has just about everything you could want. Bird law, rampant child abuse, and the possibility of Charlie dying in a duel. It's all here, folks. The comedy is as refined as always, and the subplots tie together in a pretty satisfying way. A good episode, not the best in the series, but still a strong contender. I'll put this between the gang dances their asses off and the gang gets invincible. The gang hits the road. This episode teases us with something that up until this point we haven't seen yet. The gang outside of Philadelphia. The gang is actually taking a road trip to the Grand Canyon. Charlie is scared because he's never been outside of Philly, or eaten a pear. But the episode eventually comes down to how will the gang drink if the whole episode is taking place in a car? Well, of course, they all end up drinking in the trailer behind the car and lighting a wicker chair on fire in order to cook some food. It doesn't go great. In fact, at the end of the episode, we find out that not only do they not even get out of Philly, but that the hitchhiker they picked up has stolen Dee's car. A really fun episode, just about on par with the previous. I'll rank it just below that. The Great Recession Uh-oh, Frank's lost his money in a Ponzi scheme. So this episode revolves around Frank trying to get his money back in Dennis and Mac drinking Merlot at a Dave & Buster's and trying to figure out how the economy works. This episode has its strong points. Charlie's We're crab people now! Always makes me laugh for whatever reason, but there's parts of the episode that I think are on the slower end, like Frank and Dee trying to sell knives door to door. Still an alright episode, but the weakest of the season for sure. I'll put this right below Charlie Goes America all over everyone's ass. The gang gives Frank an intervention. The beginning of this episode, if you just read the script, is absolute nonsense and I love it for that. Frank's been on a bit of a downward spiral for some time, but recently that seems to have gotten even worse. I mean, Frank and Charlie aren't even playing Nightworms anymore? And why is he drinking with Charlie? Like, is he not fun to drink with? It's a great episode that's birthed its fair share of memes. I love seeing Frank at his absolute lowest, even knowing we'll see him go lower. And we get introduced to Gale the Snail, a great episode, best of the season. I'll put this just above Sweetie as a heart attack. The waitress is getting married. The waitress is back, and she's getting married, as the episode title might suggest. Dee's selfish nature is on full display in this episode and is absolutely best exemplified by the horribly awkward bachelorette party that she throws in an attempt to get the waitress and her fiance to break up. Charlie's online dating profile in the B-plot is one of the funniest things I've ever seen, and in my opinion, that plot is probably the stronger of the two. Charlie's character writing in this episode is an absolute work of genius, and it seems to me like the episodes that really focus in on how insane his character is are probably some of the best episodes of the series. I'll put this right below the previous episode. The World Series Defense 
Compared to the absolute genius of the last couple of episodes, this is a definitive step down. Again, it's not bad or anything, it's just that the competition in the series for the best episode is actually insane. The gang is heading to the World Series game and is looking forward to the eventual riots that will take place afterwards because it's Philly. Win or lose, that city will burn. The episode frames everything as a retelling of the gang trying to get into the game in court. It's okay, not great, not terrible. I'll put it just below the gang sells out. The gang wrestles for the troops. More new characters are being introduced. This time it's Ben the Soldier and the Maniac. Poor Ben has no idea what he's getting into with the gang and is far too nice. The gang decides to do something good for other people and puts on a wrestling show for the troops. And now we're introduced to the gang's wrestling personas, the Birds of War. Their pageantry is fantastic, and the Maniac is one of the most insane, hilarious characters we've been introduced to yet. I mean, who just has a bucket of walnuts? Is he foraging for his food? A great episode. I'll put this at the top of the season and right below The Nightman Cometh. Oh, you got kids, Maniac? Nah, not anymore. What does that mean? So the beginning of this episode is very much an iconic piece of Always Sunny insanity, but what's kind of the problem is that the rest of the episode doesn't really reach the heights of the first few moments. And I mean, how could they? Kitten Mittens is the kind of absurdity that the show is built on, and when you strike oil right off the bat, where else can you keep drilling? The bulk of the episode is pretty funny still, but I'd have to rank this as mid-tier or so. List-wise, I'll be placing it between Charlie Gets Crippled and The Gang Runs For Office. Mac and Dennis break up. This episode gives us a look at Mac and Dennis's relationship from an angle that I don't think we've seen so far in the series. We get a look at how absolutely codependent these two are. They're at a point where they seemingly can't function without the other. Mac and Dennis fighting over Dennis taking too long at the video store because he really, really wanted to watch something other than Predator for the 30th time in two months is hilarious. Mac, of course, claims it's all about admiring physiques and tacking on mass. The D plot where everyone is helping her get a cat out of her wall is pretty hilarious as well, with Charlie being as unhinged as always. And of course, they leave D with several cats in her walls before they get bored and leave. A very good episode, I'll put this right below Who Pooped the Bed. The Dennis System This episode is a classic. It almost transcends the series as a whole. So Dennis has his system where he gets women to fall in love with him. And by fall in love with him, we mean he's being a manipulative, sociopathic piece of garbage to poor, unsuspecting women. So the rest of the gang, of course, all hops onto this. Charlie is trying to Dennis the waitress, and is failing to do so. Mac is swimming in Dennis's wake, Frank is picking up the scraps and just generally being Frank, Dee is convinced that Ben, the soldier who's been nothing but incredibly good to her, is Dennising her, and Dennis is out to prove that he can get any of these women back. They all, of course, fail and Dee gets stabbed and broken up with. There's not much else to say. This episode is hilarious the whole way through, is an absolute classic, and is going into the second place spot for the list right now, right below The Nightman Cometh. Mac and Charlie write a movie. This episode is kind of a mixed bag. There's parts where I think the episode could be much better or stronger or however you want to say it. Dee is very strong in this episode. She gets casted as an extra in an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Is this the part where I make a joke about his name? I'll just say his movies mostly aren't good. Mac and Charlie write a prequel to The Sixth Sense, The Fifth Sense, and Dennis, who is very uninterested the whole time, has a fantastic moment where he described in detail how depraved and sexual his movie would be. Towards the bottom of the season, I'd say, I'll put it just above the gang finds a dead guy. The gang reignites the rivalry. I like this episode. The gang is finally allowed back into the annual Flip Cup tournament and decide to reignite the rivalry with another bar. So the gang all goes about training to get back into the Flip Cup game. A bunch of them go to the fraternity Dennis was in in college and are basically bullied. They light a lawn on fire and Dee proves that she won't freeze when it comes down to just her in the competition. They go back to the frat, lose because Dee freezes when it comes down to her in the competition. And then my favorite part of the episode happens. 
The guy who they reignited the rivalry with shows up at the bar. The gang got so into their own heads that they completely forgot about the reason they were training to begin with. It's absolutely hilarious. A good episode for the most part, I'll put this right above Mac and Dennis break up. This might be the best season of the show. I know I'm only on season 5, but it kind of seems like it'll be really hard to top the season. There's so many absolutely iconic moments, lines, and episodes from the season that if I got into absolutely every one of them, this video would be much, much longer. But still, there's a lot of series to go. On to season 6. Mac fights gay marriage. Mac has found out that the trans woman he was secretly dating has married someone else. So Mac goes around trying to make their marriage seem illegitimate. It's a whole thing and Mac's relationship was pretty tone deaf. I'm not going to get too into that. Maureen Ponderosa is introduced and she ends up marrying Dennis and Dee begins an affair with Bill Ponderosa who's also introduced this episode. Frank and Charlie get married so Charlie can take care of Frank when he's older and so Charlie can be taken care of financially. Not a fantastic episode and kind of a weaker start to the season. I'll put this episode just above underage drinking a national concern. Dennis gets divorced. Oh hey, it's time to undo a bunch of stuff that just happened in the last episode. Yep, we're gonna Star Wars it. Dennis is getting divorced, Frank and Charlie are getting divorced, and Dee's affair blows up in her face. We do get to see Charlie's uncle and the lawyer face off, which is really fun, and I'm excited to see more of these characters later on. But this episode is really just there to kind of reset the status quo that they didn't need to set up in the first place. Definitely a better episode than the previous, but still not fantastic. I'll put this just above the gang exploits a miracle. We're lawyers! The gang buys a boat. This episode is absolutely fantastic. Aside from being just generally hilarious all the way through, this episode gives us one of the most famous scenes in all of the series. Dennis's delivery when talking about the absolute horror that is the implication is quite possibly one of the best acting performances in the entire series. I mean, just look at this man. No, no. but the thing right. is, is she's not gonna say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. And again, the rest of the episode is very funny as well, but it's just so ridiculously overshadowed by the sheer perfection that is the implication. Fantastic episode, best of the season. I'll put this right below the gang gives Frank an intervention. Max, big break. This episode is really, really weird because if you just look at it from a surface level, it doesn't seem like it should really work. The A and B plots are about as different and unrelated as they could be. But both of these plot lines are so hilarious that it doesn't matter that they don't really come together super well, or at all. Mac wins a chance to take a shot from center ice at a Philly Flyers game and win a chance to hang out at a beach house over the weekend. So Charlie decides to train Mac so they can win. Th they don't. Dennis and Dee bring back a bunch of characters for a podcast they're putting on. It's a super fun episode overall, and it's fun seeing some of these side characters being brought back. I'll put it below who pooped the bed. Mac and Charlie, white trash. The gang is trying to deal with that sweltering Philly heat, but the public pool is super crowded and the gang aren't allowed back at the country club. Mac and Charlie end up confronting their white trashiness, and of course they get stuck in a pool they're trying to clean and fill up. Meanwhile, Frank, Dennis, and Dee deal with a public pool. Frank's all about it. The greased watermelon is a stroke of genius, and Charlie trying to explain the jean shorts like Dennis did some episodes back is pretty funny as well. A very good episode overall. Mac's mom burns her house down. Mac's mom is back, and she's now burned her house down. So Mac and Charlie do the most reasonable thing they can think of. They decide to set both of their moms up as roommates, despite the fact they very obviously hate each other. It's about as riveting as it sounds. It's an alright episode, but it never really stuck out to me as anything fantastic in the grand scheme of Always Sunny. Again, mostly just because the bar is set so ridiculously high by the rest of the series. It's funny that Mac and Charlie's moms bond over being generally terrible, but that's really all I have to say about this one. Just above Mac and Charlie write a movie. Who got D pregnant? This episode is set up as something of a mystery. Dee is very pregnant, and she just straight up tells the gang that one of them is actually the father. 
So the gang ends up trying to piece together what exactly happened on Halloween and who ended up getting Dee pregnant, because the gang, of course, browned out that night. After talking with the McPoyles, it's seemingly implied that Dennis is the one who got his sister pregnant, but that's just a bait and switch. I think the episode is fairly funny, the bit where they continuously just replace Dee with actual birds is hilarious, and I think it's the first time that they actually do that in the series. I'll put this between $100 Baby and the Gango Jihad. The gang gets a new member. The gang opens up a time capsule and begins to kind of reevaluate their futures. Dee helps teach acting at a school, and the rest of the gang goes to find an old member of the gang they had previously kicked out. Kicked out is in kicked out of a moving car. Schmitty, played by Jason Sudeikis. It's kind of nice seeing the gang having an outside force brought into the fold who's just as depraved and up to speed on everything as the rest of the gang. It's an okay episode. I like that they're not afraid to try and shake up the show's dynamic at least a bit, something they've already shown when they've added in Frank. Kind of a right down the middle episode. I'll put this right below the gang gets held hostage. D. Reynolds, Shaping America's Youth. This episode picks up directly where the previous leaves off. And uh-oh, it's another band episode. The gang this time is showing their version of a lethal weapon movie and Mac does blackface. It's not handled super well, and it's kind of weird that that's the well the show ends up coming back to a few more times in the series. The Charlie working as a school janitor plotline where he takes a kid under his wing and tries to help him is at least a bit funny and does show Charlie's more caring side, something we don't usually see from him. I'll put this episode right below the last. Charlie Kelly, King of the Rats. This episode feels like a breath of fresh air. It may or may not be Charlie's birthday, and the gang realizes that he's feeling underappreciated, which he is definitely right to feel. So the gang splits up to put together a party for Charlie. Dee takes Charlie out for a spa day, or a spaghetti day, depending on who you are. Mac, Dennis, and Frank go under the bridge where Frank and Charlie usually hang out, and end up trying to put on kind of a luau-style party for Charlie, which is really just a ploy from Frank to have the gang throw him a birthday party instead. The gang finding Charlie's dream diary and bringing everything to life as best they can is probably the highlight of the episode for me. A very good episode, I'll be placing it above Mac and Dennis Manhunters for now. The gang gets stranded in the woods. This is another pretty fun episode. The gang gets stranded in the woods on the way to a charity event where Frank had donated a ton of money. Charlie and Dennis end up making their way and having a great time, and Frank, Mac, and Dee end up spending the night in the woods and making a connection with a rabbit. It's another pretty fun time, but definitely not as strong as the previous episode. I'll put this between Mac and Charlie write a movie, and the gang finds a dead guy. Dee gives birth. Alright, here's the season finale. I haven't talked about it a ton in the individual reviews because it wasn't super relevant most of the time, but Sweet Dee has been pregnant, and now it's time for her to give birth. The gang is once again trying to figure out who the father is and who's going to raise said baby. They ultimately decide that they need to raise the baby together, before the reveal that Dee ended up going through with her surrogacy plan that she had a while back, and the baby is actually going to be raised by Carmen and Nick. It's kind of sad that we'll likely never see these characters again, because the actor who played Nick sadly passed away in 2015. But it is nice seeing the gang, or I guess just D, genuinely helping people and bringing happiness to someone else. Yeah, she got paid $30,000, but still. A pretty good episode overall, and another good way to send the season out. I'll place this just above the gang finds a dumpster baby. A very sunny Christmas. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. There's one more episode, kind of. This is a weird one because it was a DVD exclusive episode first and then was aired later on, so I'm not really sure where to put this episode chronologically, so here it is. Despite being a bit longer, this episode doesn't have a ton to talk about except for like two moments. The first is Charlie's absolute breakdown where he bites open a mall Santa and freaks everyone right the hell out. The second is of course the famous scene of Frank coming out of a leather couch completely naked. It's absolutely hilarious, and you can see right away why they couldn't air this on TV at the time. Both of those parts are some of my favorites from the series, but the rest of the episode doesn't really live up to these high moments, unfortunately. Maybe the ending part where you can see Mac and Charlie as kids hanging out together and throwing rocks at trains, but that's about it. Towards the middle. 
This is another really good season. I don't think it's quite as strong as season five, but I mean, come on, it's always sunny. A lot of the episodes felt like they were more middling than they had been, but I'm sure that won't last too long. We're really kind of getting into prime always sunny, so it'll be exciting to see where some of these episodes wind up as the series continues. On to season seven. Frank's Pretty Woman. Here we are, Fat Mac. Rob McElhaney gained 60 pounds for the season of the show simply because he thought it would be funny. I know there's more to it than that, but I'm not getting into the whole thing right now. This episode certainly has its parts that jump out. Roxy, Frank's prostitute girlfriend, is a pretty hilarious addition to the cast for this episode, and the episode itself is brought up by the absolutely amazing line of Can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? But I think this episode overall is kind of mid, maybe slightly above that. I'll be putting this right above the Great Recession. The gang goes to the Jersey Shore. I absolutely love this episode. This is the first time that the gang actually does make it outside of Philly. And they did the smart thing where they just skipped the actual trip and arrived at the destination, the Jersey Shore. Seeing Dennis and Dee try to relive something that was magical in their childhood, but having everything go completely terrible is funny. As are both of the other plot lines of Mac and Frank getting stranded in the ocean and partying with Rumham and Charlie spending the night with the waitress, but her being disgusted the next day because she was really high. A great episode that really encapsulates everything that makes Always Sunny an amazing show. Frank Reynolds' Little Beauties This is another absolute banger of an episode. The episode revolves around Frank putting on a child pageant to show that he's not a diddler. Do not diddle kids, it's no good diddling kids. This is the first time this season that all of the plot points feel like they were collectively building towards something. In this case, it's the pageant. The musical bits are great and child pageants are really weird in general. I know, really hot takes here. Another fantastic episode, but not quite as good as the last. This will be between Mac and Dennis break up and the gang dances their asses off. Sweet D gets audited. This episode actually has some payoff for the season finale from last season. Dee's money has come through from her surrogacy scheme. Is scheme the right word? It feels somehow both right and wrong. Anyways, she's being audited because she claimed the baby on her taxes and they decide to say that the baby has died to help Dee get away with everything. It's pretty dark, even by always sunny standards. This is dark. Darkest thing we've ever done. The pickle party bit in the B-plot is relatively funny, but I think the absolute degeneracy on display throughout this episode is one of the series' best offerings. I'll be placing this just above The Gang Gets Invincible. Frank's brother. It's really sad to say, because this episode has one of the funniest bits in the series, I think. But I think this episode is definitely among the worst in the entire series. And the Shia Dynasty bit is weirdly funny. So it's sad that that joke is stuck in a really weak episode. This is a flashback episode that introduces Frank's brother. I don't think the vast majority of the episode really works as well as everything else in the series. I think the love storyline is on the weaker end and nothing really sticks out to me in this episode as exceptional. I'll place this towards the bottom of the list, only above the gang cracks the Liberty Bell. Storm of the Century. This episode is a great turnabout after the previous dud. The gang is looking at a huge natural disaster and has to restock their Y2K shelter after they spent the last decade basically taking stuff out of it. Dennis, Mac, and Charlie go to get supplies and women to come back to the bar and into the shelter. Frank and Dee stay back at the bar and Cricket eventually ends up getting shot. The storm ends up getting downgraded, but the city ends up kind of looting and rioting because the credit card system goes down. It's a really fun episode overall. I'll put this between Dennis and Dee get a new dad and Charlie gets crippled. Char D. McDennis, The Game of Games. This episode is absolutely iconic. I'm honestly not even sure where to start when talking about it. Dennis and Dee are an absolutely terrifying team. Mac and Charlie never winning, even once, is hilariously on brand, and Frank being out of the loop on something the gang likes to do is actually becoming less and less convincing the longer he's a member of the cast. 
The games are all great, the characters are all at their peak, and cheating not only being allowed but encouraged is the most always sunny thing I think I've ever heard. The episode is hilarious throughout and is definitely the best of the season. I'll put this right below The Nightman Cometh, but above the gang rustles for the troops. The Anti-Social Network I routinely kind of forget about this episode, which is kind of weird because I think there's a lot of really good jokes in this episode. The gang hunting down a serial shusher is incredibly on brand for them, and the different ways they go about it is pretty funny. I really like Frank not understanding what a viral video is and accidentally going viral because he made it seem like everyone at the bar was horribly, horribly sick. But the ending, where the Shusher just kind of walks into the bar, feels kind of contrived. Like they really didn't need to tie the plot line up realistically. They could have just gotten shushed by someone else or something and been distracted by that. I, I'm not entirely sure. I'll be placing it just above the gang runs for office. The gang gets trapped. The gang breaking into a house to steal a vase is something that seems about as off the wall as any episode of Always Sunny could be, but the episode works strangely well in my opinion. The episode does do something different than any other episode we've seen so far. We're immediately thrown into a precarious situation the gang has found themselves in. No setup or anything, they're just kind of in the middle of something. The gang is, for the most part, hiding throughout a house from a family whose life seems to be crumbling apart, with the mother in the process of leaving her husband and taking their daughter with her. So while all that's going on, the gang is running from room to room, hiding right in plain sight sometimes, all while trying to figure out how to get out of the house with the vase. Eventually they just decide that the family isn't paying attention at all and just try to walk out, before finally getting caught and then Frank whips and breaks the vase? It's a very funny episode. I'll place this right above the gang exploits the mortgage crisis. How Mac got fat. Here we are. It's time to discuss how and why Mac actually put on the weight that he's put on this season. Kind of. I really, really want to like this episode more than I do. Again, there are very few episodes in the series that I would consider not good, and this isn't one of those rare episodes. I just really wanted it to be a bit stronger. The gang has become weirdly successful and want to do everything they can to keep the success going. Dennis ends up borderline mutilating himself in order to keep up his perfection. Dee is too focused on trying to tell jokes, and Charlie is just kind of a terrible bartender. Of course, everything basically falls apart and their fleeting success passes them by, but Mac has been packing on mass and has gained 60 pounds. Not exactly of muscle or anything like that. It's an okay episode in terms of Always Sunny. I'll be placing this just above the anti-social network. Thundergun Express The gang is desperately trying to get to the Thundergun Express showing in theaters. But with traffic being terrible, they all abandon Dennis in his car and try to get to the theater on their own. Frank hijacking a tourist boat is pretty funny, as is Dennis listening to a tape he made of him seducing a girl. This episode is another one that's kind of on the lower end of things. There's a lot going on in this episode, maybe too much at any given point. I'll be placing this one a little bit lower on the list, just above Mac is a serial killer. The High School Reunion Part 1 this episode is a lot of setup for the second part, so it's kind of hard to judge aside from that. Frank sneaking into the high school reunion despite very obviously not being Nicky Potnik or even anywhere close to the same age as everyone else is funny. We get the reveal of Mac's name actually being Ronald McDonald. Man, his parents really didn't like him. And we get to see a ton of characters both old and new who each, for the most part, have their time in the spotlight. It's okay, but there's just not a ton of payoff quite yet, and the episode on its own kind of suffers for that. I'll put this above The Great Recession. The High School Reunion Part 2 This episode just feels like it's completely payoff for the previous episode. Which, I mean, it is. Dennis goes absolutely unhinged in this episode, and we get to see him get his tools for the first major time. We also get to hear how Dennis wasn't nearly as popular as he thought he was in high school, despite someone much earlier in the series saying that Dennis was cool. 
it's kind of a weird spot in the show's continuity. The gang's eventual dancing and it cutting between what they think is happening and what's actually happening is hilarious. A pretty solid episode and a good way to send off the season. The season is one of very high highs and incredibly low lows. It's definitely the most polarizing so far in terms of quality. I mean, how can you have Frank's brother and Charlie McDennis just two episodes apart? It's absolutely insane. This definitely starts to show some cracks in the show, or at least show that even if Always Sunny is phenomenal, it's still possible for the occasional disappointment to sneak through. Anyways, on to season 8. And with this, we're past the halfway point in terms of seasons. Pop Pop, the final solution. Pop Pop is someone that we haven't seen since the first season of the show. So it's time once again to check in on Dennis and Dee's bad guy in World War II grandfather. Apparently, Pop Pop is in a coma and it's up to Dennis and Dee to decide if they should pull the plug or not. The episode itself is pretty meh, a weaker start to the season, but we do get to see more of Cricket's descent, which is always fun. I'll place it just above the gang exploits a miracle. The gang recycles their trash. Uh-oh, time for another episode that's been removed. This one is much, much better than the last removed episode. In fact, this is probably towards the top of my overall ranking. It's a super fun episode and all the characters insane quirks are on full display. This is another very meta episode with the gang once again trying to figure out what their specific positions are in the gang. I think it works very well for the most part and of all the episodes that ended up getting removed, this is probably the strongest of them and the saddest one to lose. The Maureen Ponderosa Wedding Massacre This is kind of a themed episode, but unlike some of the not so great themed episodes that we've seen in the past, I think this is a pretty solid showing for the series. There's a lot of horror movie homages going on throughout the episode, and as someone whose fiancé makes him watch a ton of horror movies, that honestly made it pretty fun. We get to see more of the weirdness that is the McPoyle family, we get a bath salts fueled zombie apocalypse, and we get to see more Maureen Ponderosa. Everything I just said is the formula for a pretty solid episode overall. I'll be putting this just above Frank's Pretty Woman. Charlie and Dee find love. This episode feels kind of weird. Charlie and Dee both begin dating a pair of incredibly wealthy siblings. Dennis begins to insist that they're playing a rich person game where they find poor people and bring them in to make fun of them. There's a lot going on despite the relatively simple idea for the plot. I'm not a huge fan of the twist in the episode being that Charlie actually had a legitimate chance at love but was super manipulative in an effort to get the waitress to fall for him. I'm not the biggest fan of this episode overall, I'll place it just under Pop Pop The Final Solution. The gang gets analyzed. I really, really love this episode. We know the gang is insane. Everyone the gang interacts with knows they're insane. The only people who seem unaware of this fact are the gang themselves. And in this episode, they find themselves kind of forced to confront their absolute insanity. And it goes about as well as you'd expect. I mean, they basically break the therapist they're talking to. And all because no one wanted to do the dishes. Each and every member of the gang gets their moments to shine in this episode, and they absolutely take advantage of it. A fantastic episode, best of the season for sure. For the time, this is taking the second place spot on my list. Charlie's mom has cancer. This season is really into taking a second look at previous storylines or ideas and re-examining them. And I'm kind of digging that to be honest. It's really fun seeing how their opinions and jokes have changed. It's also pretty funny seeing the gang's plans kind of turned back around on them. I love the idea of Dennis running around and trying to feel feelings like some kind of 14 year old kid, and the bit at the end where he feels too much is great as well. And Dr. Jinx is a super fun character. A great episode and towards the top of the list. I'll put this just above the gang reignites the rivalry. Frank's back in business. The Warthog, aka Frank, is getting called back into the business he used to run. And of course, Frank decides to bring Charlie with him despite his illiteracy. He'll adapt. He'll adapt to reading? While Frank and Charlie's business antics are going down, Dennis, Mac, and Dee are all impersonating Brian Lefebvre and his associates. 
Dennis really just wants to get into someone else's skin in a definitely not serial killer way and promises that'll help everyone involved get off. Which I mean, at least he does. It's a fantastic episode and really showcases the characters at their best, or I guess worst, however you want to look at it. Between Who Pooped the Bed and Sweet D Has a Heart Attack. Charlie Rules the World. The bulk of the gang is obsessed with the game because they feel like when they're doing well in the game, they're doing well in real life. Definitely not something I can relate to. I like seeing Charlie be super competent at the game for whatever reason and take a leading role in the gang for a bit. Dennis goes on a journey of self-discovery that ends with him coming to the realization that he's God, which is incredibly narcissistic and absolutely makes sense for his character. What's less expected is Frank's obsession with becoming a real housewife but still it somehow works incredibly well and is pretty hilarious. Another fantastic episode overall, I'll place this right below The Waitress is Getting Married. The Gang Dines Out The gang feels like they're doing their best to restrain themselves this time, and somehow I think that makes this episode feel all the funnier. The entire gang is out for dinner in separate groups, and it becomes kind of a power struggle between the groups of Dennis and Mac and Charlie and Frank. Dee is also there, but she definitely has the much more boring of the plot lines. There's a popular meme that comes from this episode too, the one where Charlie and Mac see each other from across the restaurant. It's one of my favorites from the series. The, the, the meme that is. I guess though I really like this episode too to be fair. It'll probably be towards the top as well. I'll put this just under Frank's back in business. Reynolds vs. Reynolds, The Serial Defense My favorite part of this episode is more something based around the episode than in it. The whole thing with Dennis being rear-ended while driving and eating cereal is something that actually happened to Glenn Howerton, the actor who played Dennis. The fact that he's so ridiculously similar to Dennis, in some aspects, not all, is hilarious. The episode itself is pretty fun, but nothing exceptional in terms of Always Sunny. But the fact that the part of the episode that makes me laugh the hardest is thinking about that actually happening to Glenn isn't a fantastic sign for the episode. I'll place it towards the middle of the list. I think this season was much more consistent than the previous one. They took more chances and got pretty experimental with the show's format. And I think that paid off big time for the show, and it's nice seeing them retackle ideas that they've had in the past and seeing how they've evolved and changed as writers and people is pretty cool and not something that you're able to see in most shows. A fantastic season with some of the very best the show has to offer. On to season nine. The gang broke D. D has been the gang's punching bag for basically the entire series. And it seems like finally, after nine seasons of insults, the gang has broken D. She's kind of given up on everything, while the rest of the gang puts together a super elaborate plan to build D's confidence back up and eventually pull the rug out from under her. Dennis is glad that D has seemingly accepted her lot in life and is trying to take advantage of the situation and take complete control of her life, set her up with some guy and have her taken off his hands forever. Seeing Dee seemingly so close to her dreams and having reality come crashing down on her is pretty funny, but I don't think this episode sticks out to me as anything fantastic. Towards the middle of the list again. Gun Fever 2, still hot. Much like the previous season, here we have the gang take another look at a topic they touched on a while back, but with some fresh eyes and a different perspective. But I don't think this episode is nearly as strong as some of the episodes from last season. Again, it's not bad by any means, the series is just incredibly strong. The episode does have one of the most famous memes from the show. Wow. Anyway, I started blasting. Bah, wow. bah. But that's probably the strongest part of the episode. The Uncle Jack stuff is pretty funny, as it usually is, but there's not a ton to say about this episode. I'll put this below the gang gets a new member. The gang tries desperately to win an award. This is a pretty meta episode. So despite Always Sunny having been airing for 15 seasons, they've only been nominated for an Emmy once, for stunt coordination of all things. That's insane and shows the absolute lack of respect the industry at large has for the show. They absolutely deserve a ton of awards. So this episode is kind of commenting on that fact. The gang is going out of their way to make the bar more accessible to the masses, 
but in doing so they sort of lose that always sunny charm that they're known for. And it ends with Charlie literally telling everyone off in song form. It's super fun and it's nice seeing the writers coming to peace with the fact they probably won't ever win an award for the show, despite it absolutely deserving to. I'll put this between Mac's Big Break and The High School Reunion Part 2. Mac and Dennis buy a timeshare. This episode houses the biggest mystery in the entirety of the show. Scientists and theorists have been discussing this for years, but despite all of the conversations, no clear answer has ever been given. How did Frank get stuck? There's no clear answer and there's no resolution, so we're just left to wonder. The rest of the episode is pretty great too. Dee gets suckered into a pyramid, sorry, sorry, I mean reverse funnel scheme. She brings in Charlie and eventually even the maniac shows up. Mac and Dennis buy timeshare not realizing that that's basically also a huge scam. Sorry to everyone who has a timeshare, it's very scammy. A very solid episode overall. Mac Day. The idea behind this episode is probably one of the best the series has to offer. Each member of the gang gets a day where everyone in the gang has to do whatever they want. This is, of course, Max Day. We're introduced to Max's cousin, Country Mac, who is basically the same as Mac on the surface level, except infinitely more likable. He's actually good at fighting, open with his sexuality, and just kind of a badass dude. But I think the episode itself doesn't really live up to the actual idea behind it, if that makes sense. Kind of a bland episode with an above average premise. I'll put this above the high school reunion part one. The gang saves the day. Have you ever been watching Always Sunny and thought, I wonder how this member of the gang sees themselves or the situations they're in? Well, this episode sets out to answer that very question. It's interesting seeing how each and every member of the gang sees not just themselves, but the other members of the gang. But aside from that, I don't think the episode is doing anything too crazy. The animated parody of Ob for Charlie is pretty funny, and I really like Frank daydreaming of just going and eating hot dogs while the robbery is happening and his daughter is being killed, but that's really all I can think of that stood out to me from this episode. I'll actually place it just below the gang broke D. The gang gets quarantined. This episode title definitely takes on a different connotation than it did back in 2013 when it originally aired. The gang is trying to avoid the flu so they can sing and win a contest. So they quarantine themselves in the bar and stop drinking, but they still manage to get themselves incredibly sick. But it turns out that they're just super dependent on alcohol and as soon as they start drinking again, all of their symptoms subside. It's an okay episode, probably better than the last few for sure. And that bit at the end with Frank completely shaved and absolutely covered in sanitizer is definitely the best part of the episode. I'll place this just below Reynolds vs. Reynolds, The Serial Defense. Always Sunny making a Flowers for Algernon reference isn't something I really expected, but here we are. The A-plot is definitely the stronger of the two plot lines this time around, so let's focus on that and talk about something that I think is kind of weird and always stuck out to me. So Charlie is given pills that'll supposedly make him more intelligent, while under the effects of said pills, Charlie supposedly learns Mandarin, adopts a new smug personality, and gets sick of the waitress in just one date. It's then revealed at the end of the episode that everything was just in his head. He never learned Mandarin and he wasn't any smarter, but he was fully prepared to believe he was. But what's weird is that Charlie knows what the word placebo means and its etymology for some reason. And even when he's speaking the gibberish Mandarin, supposedly there are a few actual words sprinkled throughout, even though Charlie Day was supposedly just making noises and saying gibberish. So maybe the placebo actually did do some good for Charlie and the scientists just weren't fantastic at how they interpreted the results. Stupid that science bitches couldn't even make my friends more smarter. The gang makes Lethal Weapon 6. Another Lethal Weapon sequel, another Always Sunny episode with Blackface. Yep, another episode that's been removed. I'm not a big fan of this episode, so I'm going to keep it pretty brief. Probably my favorite parts of the episodes are actually the bits that aren't in the movie the gang is making which I think really says a lot. Frank's insistence on only funding the film if he gets to do a super graphic sex scene is classic Frank, and the fact that that's what ends up happening is pretty funny. I'll be placing this relatively low on the list. 
This season finale brings back more side characters who we haven't seen in a while than probably any other episode has. The gang has invited over all their enemies to finally squash all of the beefs they have around Philly, or at least a good bit of them. I mean, it's gotten to the point that they can't even go to a Wawa anymore. Though, I'm not sure why they'd want to cheat supremacy all the way, baby! The episode, of course, ends with an apartment fire and the gang locking everyone inside the apartment and deciding to not face their problems. About as always sunny a season finale as you could ask for. A very fun episode that will have some lasting consequences for the gang. Not something we see too often. This season wasn't fantastic. It wasn't bad or anything, but it felt like the average episode quality was a smidge lower than any of the previous seasons. I mean, the show at this point had been on for nine seasons. It's hard to keep quality as high as it had been for this many years. And we still have a bunch of seasons to go, but I think the shorter seasons that we're seeing from this point onward will definitely help the episodes that get through to air be more consistent and higher quality than if they had to put out twice the amount or anything like that. On to season 10. The gang beats Boggs. I'm not sure what it is about this episode, but I really enjoy it. Seeing the gang just kind of doing what they're best at Drinking on a cross-country plane ride is them in their perfect environment. Dee constantly getting Wade Boggs mixed up with Boss Hogg and Charlie not understanding that Wade Boggs is still very much alive are both hilarious bits that we see throughout the episode and it's rare that we see the gang get this absolutely hammered. I mean, we've seen them get drunk before, but this is like next level. I mean, Charlie needs subtitles. I think it's a pretty fun episode and everybody gets their moments to shine throughout. I'll put this episode right below Mac's big break. The gang group dates. I absolutely love this episode. As much fun as it is seeing Dennis when he's his incredibly overconfident self, there's something super satisfying about seeing him get ripped back down to reality. Dennis spirals out of control super fast because, as we all know, he's a five-star man and deserves to be recognized as such. Frank, Charlie, and Mac triple dating and learning from their mistakes and making it slightly further each date is pretty hilarious, as is Dee's determination to take down all the men only looking for one night stands by having one night stands with them. Definitely towards the top of the rankings. Psycho Pete returns. Psycho Pete is a name we've heard a few times throughout the series, and it turns out that now he's basically the exact opposite as he was. I think it's kind of a nice touch to show that sometimes people who were not the best people in high school can grow and change as they age. The gang, however, hasn't matured at all, and Charlie and Mac are doing their best to get Pete to regress back to the monster who used to yell in babies' faces. We also get some closure on the Frank institutionalized frog boy plotline, which sounds absolutely insane as I write it in the script. There's a good bit going on in this episode, but I don't think it does anything special throughout its runtime. For now, it's going below the Gang Gets Extreme Home Makeover Edition. Charlie Work. This episode is leagues above anything else the show has done purely on a technical level. The long continuous shot of Charlie as he navigates the rest of the gang's attempt at a scheme that's rapidly falling apart, the bar being masqueraded as a steak restaurant, a health inspector doing an impromptu inspection, and setting up a joke stool is absolutely stunning. Seeing all of these different elements weave together while there's no cuts at all is actually pretty incredible to see. And that's definitely the biggest selling point in the episode because the rest of what's happening isn't incredibly funny or anything. So despite how much I really appreciate the long shot in this episode, I can't rank it too high even if I do like seeing how Charlie really does keep the bar running in his own way. I'll place it above the gang gets invincible for the time being. The gang spies like US. I kind of forgot this episode was a thing. That's how unremarkable it is when compared to the series as a whole. There are a few funny moments and lines as you'd expect from just about any episode of Always Sunny at this point. Dennis's spaghetti line in particular stands out to me for this episode. I'm to remember every man I've seen fall into a plate of spaghetti. And the episode even ends in the Always Sunny trope of someone being in the hospital but there's just nothing fantastic this time around. Lower tier for sure. The gang misses the boat. The gang is getting a bit meta again. They're kind of over the traditional tropes and general weirdness that they've been living in for the last 10 years or so. 
So they all kind of set off to do their own things in the world and explore who they are as people and characters. Dennis's quest to sell his Range Rover that he drove into the water and becoming more and more untethered in his rage knowing less bounds is absolutely hilarious. Frank finds and ruins another bar in the span of a day and a half, Mac does Mac things, and Charlie and Dee actually bond over both of them being punching bags for the group and they hook up and things get pretty awkward. This episode is absolutely fantastic from start to finish. All of the plot lines showcase the best and worst aspects of the gang in a beautiful fashion. This is towards the top of the series for me, right between The Nightman Cometh and Charlie McDennis, The Game of Games. Mac kills his dad. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. I don't really like Luther as a character. I think I like what he represents, Mac's father issues and a physical representation of Mac's refusal to accept his identity, but his character is just kind of boring, I guess? This is a pretty middling episode for the most part. Mac and Charlie talking to Charlie's mother and her describing in detail the graphic sex she had with Mac's dad and another guy, all the while glossing over the murder details and focusing on the sex is pretty funny, but that's probably the funniest part of the episode for me. I'll place this right above Mac and Charlie Die Part 1. The gang goes on family fight. The gang has somehow managed to get onto a family feud style show hosted by Keegan Michael Key. Dennis is very concerned that the rest of the gang is going to humiliate him by just kind of being themselves. And that's actually kind of a fair point. And that's what happens for the most part. But the rest of the gang kind of ends up holding their own, and Dennis gives some really weird answers because he has trouble connecting with the common man. Charlie giving the weirdest answers possible and then being on the board with the eventual reveal that he was part of the survey is pretty funny, as is Frank absolutely killing the final round and Dennis breaking down. A pretty good episode, right below Mac and Charlie White Trash. Frank retires. Frank has decided he's retiring and the gang each tries to fill the power vacuum. But according to the agreement they came to earlier, the firstborn gets the bar. The problem being, Dennis and Dee are twins. There's a lot of scheming going on. Mac tries to play both sides and is absolutely terrible at it. Frank loses way too much blood. And Charlie and Dee kind of team up. The Crundle thing is absolutely hilarious by the way. But the best part of this episode is at the very end. The reveal of Dennis's long-term plan to take over the bar and seeing Frank look absolutely ghastly because, again, he lost way too much blood are both hilarious moments. An above average episode for the series. Ask Kickers United, Mac and Charlie join a cult. We've seen Dennis's love of manipulation and sociopathic tendencies throughout the series. I mean, we just saw it in the last episode, but this episode really puts it on display throughout. Dennis has started a cult to get Mac to stop eating his Thin Mints, but Frank and Dee get involved and suddenly there's too many cooks in the kitchen. I mean, this episode just ends with one of the cult members lighting themselves on fire. That's pretty metal, I guess. It's a fun episode that shows how far Dennis is willing to go for even the slightest inconvenience. Another pretty fun way to send the season out. This season has a lot of really great episodes. It's definitely a step up from the last season and houses some of the best episodes of the series. Of course, there are a few that don't live up to those expectations, but I mean, come on, the show's been on for a decade at this point and it's still going incredibly strong. I like that it feels like they're leading more and more into Dennis being an absolute monster. Yeah, he was terrible and did terrible things before, but it seems like they're almost like tripling down on that and making his manipulative side more prevalent. Let's keep going, on to season 11. Chardy McDennis 2, Electric Boogaloo. So of all the wells they could try and go back to, Chardy McDennis is probably the one that makes the most sense. I mean, the original was absolutely fantastic, so why not try and capture that magic for a second time? The major problem being that they're not really super successful in bringing anything new to the table this go around. There's a couple new Charlie McDennis games and we get to see David Wallace from The Office, but the weird horror layer that Frank just randomly decides to add at the end of the episode feels weird and sort of out of place. The episode is really nowhere near as good as the first episode, probably towards the middle of the pack for the series. Frank falls out the window. Uh oh, Frank's fallen out of a window and hit his head super hard. But instead of dying, he just has a massive gash on his head and thinks it's 2006. 
right around the time he actually joined the gang, right before he really went off the deep end. So we get to see a bunch of the characters kind of take advantage of that fact. Dennis and Dee try to get a bunch of money off of Frank, but he writes down 2006 instead of the right year on the check, and Charlie is convinced of some weird time travel shenanigans. The gash on Frank's head is super gross to look at, so props to the makeup department for that. A pretty good episode overall. I'll put this above Charlie Kelly, King of the Rats. The gang hits the slopes. The gang is going to the Poconos for some skiing, and I just had some Pennsylvania flashbacks, so please forgive me if I seem a little bit out of it. Apparently, this whole episode is a reference to a 1991 film named Ski School, a movie I've never even heard of, and apparently only brought in like 20,000 in the box office, so yeah, that's probably why. Anyways, the episode itself is okay. I get that it's supposed to be like an 80s ski movie, but it just doesn't gel super well in my opinion. Not to mention the weirdly long Charlie sex sequence is weird. The end where the ski instructor gets arrested and everyone kind of comments on how he was a terrible person and most people in 80s to 90s comedies were like that is probably the best bit of the episode in my opinion. Right above, the gang gets held hostage. D made a smut film. This is a pretty fun episode, or at least it has some really fun moments. Frank's alter ego as an art critic is one of the best characters that the gang has come up with. Ongo Goblogian, the art collector. The episode itself sets out to ask the question of what is art? And they don't really ever come to a definitive answer, which is probably the right way to look at art. It's something purely made to cause some sort of emotional response. And Frank has plenty of those experiences in this episode. This is another one of those episodes where the plots don't really feel like they come together at all. And unlike in some previous episodes, I think the disconnected feeling of the plot lines kind of hurts the episode's quality a bit. I'll put this above Mac's mom burns her house down. Mac and Dennis move to the suburbs. This is definitely one of the best episodes of the season so far, and is absolutely a contender for best of the series. Which is strange because it actually barely features three of the five members. Instead, focusing on the relationship of Mac and Dennis as the two move out of Dee's apartment and into a home in the suburbs. After a bet with Frank, if the two of them can make it for a month, Frank will pay their rent for a year. Sounds easy enough, but without the rest of the gang to act as a sort of buffer, Mac and Dennis quickly get under each other's skin. Seeing them both kind of go off the rails as the month goes on, Mac only cooking Mac's famous mac and cheese, feeding their dog to Dennis, and Dennis lying about hearing the smoke alarm simply because he hates Mac. They both go completely untethered, and it's pretty fun to watch. I'll place this right below Charlie McDennis, The Game of Games. Being Frank Huh, this season really has a lot of Frank-centric episodes. And hey, I'm not really complaining. Or maybe I should a bit more, this is a pretty middling episode I think. It's pretty fun seeing everything through the perspective of Frank, as in literally through his perspective. It's a first person episode. We see how confused Frank is as to what's happening at any given moment, and much like the gang gets trapped, we aren't privy to what the gang's ultimate plan is. We just see Frank trying desperately to remember what his role in the scheme actually is. It's an interesting idea, but I don't know how well it really succeeds as an episode aside from that concept. Some of the Bill Ponderosa bits are funny, but the episode isn't the funniest of the bunch. McPoyle vs. Ponderosa, The Trial of the Century This episode is a sequel of sorts to the Maureen Ponderosa Wedding Massacre. The episode brings back a ton of side characters in a trial episode. We get to see the lawyer and Uncle Jack face off again. The McPoyles and Ponderosas are in rare form. Maureen is more cat than woman at this point and Birdlaw makes an incredibly triumphant return and actually kind of saves the day. I love seeing the judge get more and more confused and annoyed by basically everything that's happening, and the absolute frustration at the end of the episode when the judge realizes that the gang is also the next case is pretty hilarious. A pretty good episode overall. Charlie catches a leprechaun. I'm actually really, really surprised that it took almost 120 episodes to do a St. Patrick's Day episode. I mean, with a bar named Patty's Pub, you think they would have done that much earlier. Anyways, Charlie has captured someone in a glue trap who he thinks is a leprechaun, and that's definitely the weaker of the two plotlines, I think. There's a kind of fun Reservoir Dogs reference in there, but that's about it. 
The plot line that I think works better is the gang accidentally, or at least accidentally at first, kidnapping and robbing a bunch of people in a truck while trying to take Patty's pub mobile. I think the kidnapping plot is much stronger and showcases how the gang's schemes tend to go off the rails. I'll put this one towards the middle of the list, right below Mac Day. The Gang Goes to Hell, Part 1 so something I've talked with a lot of people about when talking about the show was the idea I had that the only way the show could end in a satisfying way would be if one or all of the gang died in some way. And this episode kind of teases you with that. But this is the first part of a two-parter in historically in the series, these episodes haven't been the strongest. And this one isn't exempt to that trend. This episode is a lot of setup, getting the gang onto a Christian cruise with no alcohol, Mac kind of confronting the fact that he's a gay Christian, at least a little bit. Dennis is incredibly creepy, and the whole gang ends the episode getting thrown into the brig as a storm approaches the cruise. It's not fantastic, there's nothing super funny, it's just kind of your bog standard episode of Always Sunny, which again is still a very solid episode of TV. The Gang Goes to Hell, Part 2 Here's the follow up. The gang is in the brig and the ship is being hit by a storm and seems to be slowly starting to sink. In my opinion, this episode has two specific parts that stick out to me. The first being Dennis's absolutely insanely accurate impression of CCH Pounder from The Shield. I mean, just listen. God damn it, Dutch! What other errands do you have us running for the DA? What other errands do you have us running for the DA? The other is a scene towards the end of the episode where the gang just kind of accepts their probable deaths as the brig fills with water slowly. The gang doesn't actually die. Obviously you can tell by how much of this video is left. I think this is the rare occurrence where the first part of the two-parter is the stronger episode. I'll place this just below the last. This season tries to do a lot of interesting things throughout the entirety of the season. Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. I mean, they made an entire episode from Frank's perspective. A POV style episode like that isn't something that's super common in traditional TV. There was a nice duality in some of the episodes trying new things, while others felt like they stuck to what the gang does best, putting together schemes that fall apart and evolve into madness. Not a bad season by any stretch, but definitely a step down from the previous seasons. On to season 12. The gang turns black. I think I'm kind of torn on this episode. On one hand, this episode has some of the best musical numbers the series has to offer. Charlie Day, who writes like all the music, is an absolute genius. But on the other hand, I think the writers are somewhat limited in their perspective when writing an authentic experience. I think seeing the gang face their own prejudices is where the episode is at its strongest. In any time it's doing something different, it feels much weaker. Towards the bottom part of the list, below Psycho Pete Returns. The gang goes to a water park. I think that this episode is much stronger than the last. The gang has, as the episode title may suggest, gone to a water park for the day. Frank and Charlie go to ride everything they can, Mac and Dee get stuck in a water slide, and Dennis takes on a sidekick. It's a pretty fun and light episode. Seeing more and more kids get stuck behind Mac and D in the water slide makes me laugh more than it probably should, as does Frank and Charlie running around saying that Frank has aid so they can skip the lines for the water slides. It's a pretty fun episode overall, between the gang goes on family fight and bums making a mess all over the city. Old Lady House, a situation comedy. So remember a few seasons back where we talked about Mac and Charlie's moms living with each other despite not really liking each other too much? Well, this is kind of a direct follow-up to that. So the gang uses cameras set up in Charlie's mom's house to see what life looks like. And they end up putting a laugh track over everything and it basically looks like a generic sitcom. Yep, it's essentially another meta look at traditional sitcom tropes. And again, the show does a very good job of handling what they're trying to say about other comedies. The episode is really funny and because there's a laugh track, I know when I'm supposed to laugh and what's supposed to be funny. I'll put this above Reynolds vs. Reynolds, The Serial Defense. Wolf Cola, a public relations nightmare. One of Frank's money laundering schemes that we've seen a couple times throughout the series is his iconic Wolf Cola and Frank's fluids. But now the drink has become the official drink of a terrorist organization and the gang sets out to tackle the 24-hour news cycle. 
Dee and Frank bomb almost immediately, and Dennis initially comes off as likable, before he kind of makes everyone hate him as well. In the B-plot, we see the return of Fight Milk and eventually becomes super popular in the MMA community because it makes everyone sick and helps them cut weight. And eventually, the HGH in Fight Milk ends up getting the new cycle away from Wolf Cola. A very fun episode, not quite as strong as the last, but still a good showing for the series. Just below, the gang solves the gas crisis. Making Dennis Reynolds a murderer. This episode is from around the time that Making a Murderer brought true crime back into the mainstream spotlight for a bit. And so this mockumentary slash documentary slash whatever we should call it looks at if Dennis actually killed Maureen Ponderosa. Also, Maureen Ponderosa is dead. Dennis is the kind of character who is seemingly always on the cusp of murdering someone, and now he may have actually done just that. I mean, he probably did, but there's no definitive answer technically. The rest of the episode isn't anything too funny, and I think the episode really isn't the strongest. The reference to the jinx when Frank doesn't realize his mic is still live is funny, but that's about it. Above being Frank. Hero or hate crime? This episode is the one where Mac finally, finally, fully comes out of the closet. But let's back up. Frank yells a slur at Mac to save his life. And because of that and a lottery ticket, there's a huge discourse over who rightly deserves the possibly winning ticket. There are some funny parts in the episode, Mac's workout bike, Charlie going out of his way to step in dog poop, and the gang switching their moderator for the argument several times. And I'm honestly glad that Mac is finally out in the show. The joke of him being in the closet was getting pretty stale, and this opens up a lot of opportunities for new storylines in the series. An alright episode. Mid-tier for sure, I'll put it above the gang runs for office. PTSD. Okay, so we've seen all of the characters do incredibly dark and messed up things, but this, to me, feels like it may be the darkest thing that D specifically has done to date. D has become someone else's rock bottom, so she sets out with an elaborate scheme to make him fall even further so she's not technically his rock bottom. The guy, who's a stripper, is tricked into dancing on his daughter. It's really messed up and something we'd expect to see more from Dennis rather than D, but it's a nice change of pace seeing D be an absolute monster for a change. The other plot lines aren't anything phenomenal. The daddy and the boy dancer thing that Dennis and Charlie are doing has some funny moments but isn't anything special. Another mid-tier episode below the gang sells out. The gang tends bar. So an episode where the gang just decides to actually do their job sounds like it could be an interesting idea for an episode, where they just kind of do the best job they could at the bar. But we've seen similar ideas a couple of times already in the series. How Mac got fat was a very similar idea, even if none of the gang took it that seriously. The episode really isn't terribly funny or anything, but at the end of the episode, Dennis is gifted a rocket launcher from Mac, so at least there's that. I'll put it above Mac kills his dad. A Cricket's Tale Cricket has been spiraling for many, many seasons at this point. So this episode gives us something of a look at what his life could look like if he were to give up the drugs and go back and get help from his family. It's kind of nice seeing Cricket get himself together throughout the episode and get close to a girl. But then at the end of the episode, it's revealed that a lot of what was happening was simply because Cricket was just high the whole time. Even the girl he's gotten close with was just a dog, which is kind of gross. An all right episode. Uh, here's your always sunny fun fact. David Hornsby, the actor who plays Cricket and writes for the show, is married to Emily Deschanel. Dennis's double life. This episode feels like it could truly be a series finale instead of just the season finale. A few seasons back in The Gang Beats Boggs, Dennis got off a plane in North Dakota. Apparently, while he was there, he fathered a child with a woman while under the alias Brian Lefebvre. That woman is now here, and Dennis is faced with being a father or just leaving that opportunity behind. Charlie, after 12 seasons of stalking, finally sleeps with the waitress and the two of them are seemingly together afterwards. And at the end of the episode, Dennis turns off the lights to the bar and leaves deciding to go be a father. At the time, Glenn Howerton had a new show on NBC, AP Bio. This very well could have been the last time we ever saw Dennis's character. That didn't end up being the case, but it would have been an effective send-off for the character. A not terrible episode and an okay ending to the season.
What I think I like most about the season is that at the end of it, for the first time in a long time, I have actually no idea where the characters and their arcs could go. Charlie has gotten with a waitress, Dennis may be gone, Mac is out of the closet, Dee has done one of the darkest things the gang has done, and Frank may have to live with the waitress. It's a pretty exciting shakeup, all things considered. And while, yes, I know now that Dennis does come back, there was always the looming threat that he might not. The season as a whole is kind of towards the middle of the pack in terms of episodes, but there's nothing egregiously bad in the season, nothing that sticks out as less than stellar. A pretty solid season. On to season 13. The gang makes Paddy's great again. Okay, so remember a few seasons back where Mac put on a bunch of weight for a joke? Well, in this season, Mac has gotten absolutely shredded. He brings it up in this episode, but it doesn't really come up a lot throughout the season like when Mac was overweight. Anyways, Dennis's shadow looms pretty heavy over the entire episode. The gang has replaced him with Mindy Kaling, or Kelly from The Office. The sex doll thing with Dennis is probably the best part of the episode, but aside from that, it's not fantastic. Dennis then shows up at the end of the episode and the gang elects to go back to their previous dynamic, which is for the best in my opinion, at least in this instance. Above Max Bomb burns her house town. The gang escapes. So now Dennis is back for an entire episode, and they're spending the whole time in Dennis and Max's apartment that has temporarily been turned into an escape room. Dee getting locked in Dennis's own personal escape room, that's all soundproof and terribly creepy, is super funny and quite possibly the funniest part of the episode. I also like that Dee knew all of the escape room answers because she had done it previously on her own. The face-off between the guys and the gang trying to figure out who is the head cow is pretty funny, but nothing exceptional. I'll put this between The Great Recession and Frank's Pretty Woman. This episode is setting out to show that remakes of movies or pieces of media where they just swap genders isn't a fantastic way to creatively make something. And I mean, I guess they proved that because this episode is nowhere near as good as the previous Boggs episode. Dee is trying to recapture the magic of the Boggs episode with the waitress, Artemis, and Mac and Charlie's moms. It's nothing great and Dennis actually isn't even in this episode, something we'll see a bit more of in the season. Time's up for the gang. So I really, really like this episode. A lot of times when the show is trying to tackle hot button issues, those episodes don't tend to be too funny, but I think this episode feels like a much higher quality than some of the others have been. I'm not sure why this moment in particular makes me laugh so much, but it does. And the reveal at the end that the whole thing was a weird scheme put on by Dennis because he wants to continue being generally terrible and creepy is peak Dennis. The part in particular where he says their phones did in regard to consent is actually one of the most terrifying lines in the series. A pretty good episode. The gang gets new wheels. This episode starts off a bit meta, looking directly at the question of is Dennis going to stay in the show or is he going to leave again? The gang refusing to admit how codependent they really are on each other and saying they don't care if he leaves is pure always sunny and absolutely feels like what all the characters would do. So they move on from that and Dennis finds out that his beloved Range Rover has been destroyed since he left, so he spends the entire episode looking for a replacement. Mac and Charlie beat up some children, that's probably the best part of the episode. Dee's plot is pretty forgettable in this one. An alright episode, not nearly as good as the previous, below Hero or Hate Crime. The gang solves the bathroom problem. The gang is and always has been at their best when they're just kind of around and yelling at or over each other about a topic they realistically only have a passing knowledge of. As you'd expect from an episode like this, some of the gang changes sides and they never really come to a solution. It's kind of your bog standard episode of Always Sunny in that regard, and I kind of dig it for that. They aren't doing anything crazy, they're just sticking to what they know works. These conversations work because the gang are very obviously not the people who are going to be affected in any way by the conversations they're having. An okay episode. The gang does a clip show. So when I ranked every episode of The Office, I placed the clip show episode as one of the lowest ranked episodes in the entirety of the series. But I actually like what Always Sunny did with their clip show episode way more. They start off as a typical clip show episode, but it kind of devolves as they start misremembering things that they've done or imagining other episodes of TV shows as things they've done. The Seinfeld bit in particular is fantastic. 
both Mac and Dennis both being Jerry and it not needing to be explained and making perfect sense is hilarious. I also like Frank remembering himself with weirdly long legs. This is how I prefer clip shows to be done in all honesty. Not just showing clips, but adding new context on top of it. A super fun episode right above $100 Baby. Charlie's Home Alone. This episode and the next are two episodes that do something we really haven't seen in the series. I mean, maybe once in A Cricket's Tale, but this episode definitely leans into it a bit more. Instead of just being a two-parter, this episode and the next are both telling side-by-side -side stories that kind of check in on each other. The Eagles are in the Super Bowl, and the gang is all going. Except for Dennis, because this episode takes place before he comes back. In this episode, Charlie gets left behind at the bar and does a Home Alone type thing, except he ends up setting off all the traps on his own. I don't really like this episode because I really like Charlie's character, and seeing him get absolutely mauled and mangled voluntarily because he thinks it's helping the Eagles win isn't something I'm super into. I didn't really like the Saw movies for that very reason. Lower tier, right between The Gang Goes to Hell, parts 1 and 2. The Gang Wins the Big Game this is the other half of the Super Bowl duo episodes. While the other one featured Charlie left behind by the gang and friends on accident, this one features everyone else going to the Super Bowl and experiencing the highs and lows of the game. It's really not the funniest episode, but I do like the part where Mac kind of realizes that the group of misfits he brought with him to the Super Bowl are the perfect representation of Philly, and the motivational speech to Frank as he passes his kidney stone is nice too. But my favorite part of the episode is probably during the credits, where it just shows a bunch of Eagles fans all celebrating as the Eagles win the Super Bowl. And then it cuts to Rob McElhaney actually at the Super Bowl, being pumped that they won as well. Better than the last episode simply because we don't see any characters getting mutilated the whole time. Above Frank retires. Mac finds his pride. Okay, here we are. The season 13 finale. And this episode does something I haven't really seen in Always Sunny up to this point. It tries to be sincere. And hot damn does that really, really work for it. I can fully understand why someone might not like it as much as I do. Though I can fully understand why someone might not like it as much as I do. Sometimes people aren't looking for something this emotionally dense in a comedy show, but I think it's beautiful. Mac isn't feeling the pride that he thinks he should as a gay man, and Frank is trying to help him as best he can despite not really getting it. The bulk of the episode is just kind of okay, but the ending dance scene is something that I can really only describe as beautiful. It's emotionally powerful, and the fact that this episode didn't win any awards is an absolute crime. Just above Old Lady House, a situational comedy. Okay, so this season is one that I've heard a lot of people say they don't really like and that this is the show's turning point. But to be honest, I don't think the season is weaker than any of the others. They're still trying new things, and even if Dennis wasn't there for some of the episodes, and I think his absence is absolutely felt, they still did a good job of putting together a season of Always Sunny with pretty solid episodes. No, there weren't any episodes that were among the best of the best, but being an average season of Always Sunny is still a hell of an accomplishment for any season of any show. On to season 14. The gang gets romantic. The gang is setting up a couple of different Airbnbs for basically the same reason. To get with women. Mac is trying to set up a meat cube, not a meat cube, although there are also meat cubes in this episode. The plot of Mac trying to set up a woman with Dennis, her husband with Dee, and eventually her husband with himself is fairly funny. And Frank and Charlie end up making friends with people who are basically just clones of themselves, and it's kind of sweet seeing them just basically having a friendship meet cute. Nothing fantastic to start the season, but a solid start nonetheless. Thunder Gun 4 Maximum Cool The gang is revisiting the Thunder Gun movie franchise. They're part of a test audience who are going to be viewing and giving feedback on the gang's favorite movie franchise, Thunder Gun. But the problem being that the studio has decided to make the movie PG-13, and the gang absolutely hates it. I think this episode has two parts in particular that really stick out to me. The first being the gang, particularly Charlie's, reaction to the lack of dong in the film, and the second being the lady just exhausted from dealing with the gang. For a bit now, the show has been basically uncensored because it's on FXX now. In times like this, it allows the show to kind of shock you with gratuitous language out of nowhere. 
an all right episode below the gang escapes. D-Day. This is the final episode that's been removed. This is the first one that I hadn't seen previously, and I had to go out of my way to watch it for the first time. It's a sequel to the Mac Day idea, but now it's D's Day. The entire gang has to accomplish whatever D wants, but they have an underlying mission that they're trying to accomplish without D's knowledge. They're trying to get public urination legalized so they can just sort of pee wherever. I think the bulk of the gang having an ulterior motive throughout the entirety of the episode actually helps with the episode, and it makes it feel stronger and more cohesive than Mac Day. Also, Dennis without his makeup is absolutely hilarious. A pretty fun episode below Time's Up for the Gang. The Gang Chokes The gang is out to eat, and as they're enjoying their meal, Frank begins to choke. The entirety of the gang metaphorically chokes while Frank is literally choking. Except Dennis, he's just kind of watching. The waiter who routinely serves them ends up saving Frank, and Frank decides to make that guy's life better. Dennis's weirdness throughout the episode revolving around his lack of health and Dennis yelling at D with them being the same age are both hilarious moments. What are you, 40? We're the same age! D's flatliner's plotline is also pretty funny, with her chasing the adrenaline rush of almost dying. Another pretty fun episode. The Gang Texts. Episodes where the gang goes off to different places like the water park or a ski resort have been something of a mixed bag, but I think that this episode is one that works pretty well. The gang has been split up around the Philadelphia Zoo and are keeping in touch with each other through texting. Dennis's fascination with seeing the live feeding is peak Dennis, and him ditching everyone by just kind of blending with the crowd is a little terrifying when you think about all the terrible things he's done over the years. Mac being terrible at texting etiquette is super on brand, as is Dee being super late with her jokes, and I love Charlie's text being borderline illiterate, but him almost immediately understanding what people are trying to say with emojis. And the gang coming together in the prairie dog exhibit is hilarious. The look Charlie gives Mac always makes me laugh. Another solid episode, Above Hundred Dollar Baby. The janitor always mops twice. This episode is an ode to those old black and white detective movies. Charlie takes the role of the detective and is trying to figure out who diarrhea poisoned Frank. For whatever reason, everyone talking like it's the 40s and the rest of the gang just sprinkling in the phrase diarrhea poison makes me laugh every time, as does Dee constantly breaking character every time she's referred to as a goon. I also really like that even after the waitress reveals that it was her that poisoned the pie that Charlie just kind of keeps eating it. It's a fun, different kind of episode, below hero or hate crime. The gang solves global warming. The gang is dealing with the sweltering Philly heat, uh, again, but this time they're dealing with global warming as a whole, uh, kind of. Mac, Dennis, and Frank are cranking the AC at the bar to bring more people in, but the amount of people in the bar keeps making the AC less and less effective, so the temperature is slowly rising. Dee and Charlie go to get ice, while Dee is making Instagram posts trying to get famous. For whatever reason, she has Charlie be her videographer, and it goes about as well as you'd expect. It's an alright episode, nothing too special, and not really any jokes that stick out to me as anything fantastic. Paddy's has a jumper. There's a jumper on the roof of the bar, and the gang is trying to decide if they should care or not, and if they should try to stop him. Dennis leading the charge of should we care feels incredibly on brand for him and the gang at large. Frank accidentally getting the kid off the roof due to a misunderstanding feels like it was added in almost last minute and doesn't feel too cohesive with the rest of the episode. Mid-tier for sure, right below the gang wins the big game. A woman's right to chop. Okay, so this is very obviously supposed to be a thinly veiled metaphor for abortion rhetoric. There aren't a ton of funny moments throughout. One that stuck out to me was Dennis just kind of screaming and throwing a glass at a wall. Ugh, it's too much! But that's all I can think of with this episode right now. Lower tier, right above the gang solves the North Korea situation. Waiting for Big Mo. Okay, here's the season finale, and this episode's trying to be pretty meta, as the gang's been known to do. This episode is all about playing it safe versus taking chances and possibly failing, but having fun while doing so. Dennis is kind of manipulating the whole gang into just doing the easy thing, playing it safe and getting those sweet fun zone dollar dollar bills, y'all. It's pretty interesting seeing Always Sunny take a look at itself from this angle, but I don't think it's the best time the gang has gotten introspective like this. A relatively weak ending to the season. 
This season sits in a weird spot for me. There are a bunch of episodes that I would consider to be good, but the highs of the season don't feel like they reach the mighty, mighty highs of seasons past. There are a lot of solid episodes littered throughout the season, but nothing exceptional. Nothing that really shakes up the upper echelon of the list. One more season to go, season 15. 2020, a year in review. So the show had to take some time off because of that whole pandemic thing. So this episode sets up something of a here's what the gang did last year plotline. And to be quite honest, I don't really think it worked super well. I get that the gang has done a lot of terrible things over the years, but saying they're almost entirely responsible for some of the biggest political maelstroms of 2020 feels like it's a bit of a stretch even by Always Sunny standards. Because they're showing all of what the gang has done and also showing them talking to the auditor, each of the gang's individual portions feels incredibly rushed and not super fleshed out. There's nothing exceptionally funny in this episode, and it's quite possibly one of the weakest season premieres that we've seen. Below Max banging the waitress. The gang makes lethal weapon seven. Okay, so here's the gang discussing all of their episodes that have been removed. And they're doing that by deciding to make another lethal weapon movie. But this time they're not going to make the same mistakes they did the last three or so times. No, no, no. This time they're going to make different mistakes. Again, it's nothing fantastic in terms of Always Sunny, but of course they had to touch on the episodes that were removed. But of course they had to touch on the fact that some episodes were removed. It'd be really weird if they didn't. I don't know if they ended up reaching the goal they were hoping to, but the episode itself is pretty fun for the most part. The gang buys a roller rink. This is a weird episode. It takes place way in the past, right before the gang even bought the bar. They're all in their early 20s and are vastly different people than the gang we've come to know and love, and maybe fear a little bit. And I don't know how much this episode really works in the grand scheme of things. It's one of those episodes that I'll probably have to look back on in a few years to see how I really feel about it. Seeing that it was really just one bad night that kind of turned the gang into the gang and showing how they bought the bar is a pretty interesting idea for an episode. I just don't think it pans out nearly as well as it could have. Lower tier. The gang replaces D with a monkey. In this episode, the gang decides to just replace D with a monkey, who's actually suspiciously good at bartending, but it turns out that the monkey was just putting whiskey into the beers. In the other plot, Dee decides to open up an acting school, and while it turns out that she's absolutely atrocious at acting, she really gets into teaching acting. At least until she lands a part in Ireland, and now she's just going to go do that. And coincidentally, the rest of the gang has decided they're going to go to Ireland as well. A weirdly fun episode that doesn't seem like it would be at first glance. The gang goes to Ireland. Okay, so the second half of the season takes place in Ireland the most logical other country for the gang to go to. And it features something new for Always Sunny, plotlines spinning across multiple episodes, one right after the other. So the gang each has different things that they want to do while in Ireland. Mac wants to go to his ancestral home, which ends up just being a McDonald's. Turns out he may not actually be Irish. Charlie wants to meet up with a pen pal of his. Dee's trying to get to her acting job. Dennis is being Dennis, but overseas, and also dealing with the virus and Frank has some documents he's trying to get rid of. It sounds like a lot going on, but it realistically happens over the span of the next several episodes, so each of these plot points are given a solid amount of time to develop. Something that we really haven't seen much from Always Sunny. But what about this specific episode? Eh, it's alright. It sets up a lot of the plot lines that we'll see explored, but it doesn't really skimp on the jokes. Charlie thinking that Mac might be THE Ronald McDonald is funny. A good start to the saga. The gang still in Ireland. This episode has huge revelations for Always Sunny lore and continuity. We've been led to believe for 15 and a half seasons that Frank is most likely Charlie's father. But now we're introduced to a new character by the name of Shelly Kelly, someone who is now claiming to be Charlie's father. And it seems super likely. Charlie speaking and being able to read Gaelic but not English is super funny and somehow makes sense for his character. Mac is having an identity crisis after learning he's not actually Irish and goes to the seminary to make being a Catholic his main identity. And Dennis in a castle trying to murder his sister in a COVID-fueled rage is hilarious as well. A very good episode, best of the season, between Wolf Cola, a public relations nightmare, and the gang solves the gas crisis. D sinks in a bog. 
Frank is super jealous of Charlie's newfound relationship with his father, so he and Dennis conspire to scald the poor man and possibly murder him. I mean, if he dies as a result, it's not the end of the world or anything like that. Dee is stuck in a bog the whole episode, and the waitress, who is also in Ireland and takes Dee's role, stumbles across her, which feels like a bit of a stretch, but it is what it is. Max spends the day in the seminary, and it's okay. Dennis talking to the castle is probably the funniest part of the episode, in my opinion. An alright episode, nothing crazy good or bad. The gang carries a corpse up the mountain. Here we are, the most current episode at the time of this video. I actually have a huge soft spot for this episode. Charlie's newfound father has died, and Charlie has been tasked with taking his body up a mountain and throwing it into the ocean. The gang helps him, but one by one, they all leave Charlie until it's just him and his father's body. Charlie ends up having something of a breakdown. Much like the season 13 finale, it's not punctuated with a joke or anything. It's just a real human reaction that we don't typically get to see in a show like this, and that fact makes this moment hit much harder in my mind. Also, Dennis absolutely screaming at Mac about a shamrock tattoo is funnier than it has any right to be. Don't you dare! Oh, I'm Don't gonna you do dare it. get another shamrock tattoo, you son of a bitch! A solid episode and a great way to send this video out. And with that, I've now talked about my thoughts on each episode individually. Now we'll go through the list in order from what I think is the worst to the best. And since you've been listening to my voice the whole time, I decided to hire a voiceover guy off Fiverr to do the episode titles. A link to his fiver will be down in the description if you're so inclined. The gang cracks the Liberty Bell. Frank's brother. Charlie wants an abortion. The gang gets racist. Gun fever. Underage drinking, a national concern. The gang buys a roller rink. The gang spies like US. Mac fights gay marriage. Charlie got molested. The gang exploits a miracle. Charlie and Dee find love. Pop Pop, the final solution. Dennis gets divorced. The gang solves the North Korea situation. A woman's right to chop. The gang gets whacked, part two. The gang gets whacked, part one. The gang makes lethal weapon six. Mac is a serial killer. Thundergun Express. 2020, a year in review. Mac's banging the waitress. Dennis looks like a registered sex offender. The gang turns black. Psycho Pete returns. Waiting for Big Mo. The gang gets extreme. Home Makeover Edition. The Aluminium Monster vs. Fatty Magoo. Charlie has cancer. Mac and Charlie Die, Part 2. Mac and Charlie Die, Part 1. Mac kills his dad. D sinks in a bog. The gang tends bar. The gang gives back. The gang finds a dead guy. Chardy McDennis 2, Electric Boogaloo. The gang gets stranded in the woods. Mac and Charlie write a movie. Mac's mum burns her house down. The gang makes Paddy's great again. Dee made a smut film. Dee Reynolds shaping America's youth. Gun Fever 2, still hot. The gang goes to hell, part two. Charlie's Home Alone. The Gang Goes to Hell, Part 1. The Gang Gets a New Member. The Gang Solves Global Warming. The Gang Gets Held Hostage. The Gang Hits the Slopes. America's Next Top Paddy's Billboard Model Contest. The High School Reunion, Part 1. Frank Retires. Paddy's Has a Jumper. The gang wins the big game. Charlie catches a leprechaun. The gang makes lethal weapon seven. Mac Day. The Great Recession. Thundergun four, maximum cool. The gang escapes. Frank's pretty woman. 
the Maureen Ponderosa wedding massacre. Charlie goes America all over everybody's ass. A very sunny Christmas. Ask Kickers United, Mac and Charlie join a cult. The World Series defense. PTSD. The gang sells out. Being Frank. Making Dennis Reynolds a murderer. Dennis and Dee's mum is dead. Sweet Dee's dating a retarded person. The gang runs for office. The gang gets romantic. A cricket's tail. The gang gets new wheels. The janitor always mops twice. Hero or hate crime. The anti-social network. How Mac got fat. Charlie gets crippled. The gang solves the bathroom problem. Dennis's double life. The gang chokes. Storm of the century. Dennis and Dee get a new dad. Mac bangs Dennis's mum. Hundred dollar baby. The gang texts. The gang does a clip show. The gang saves the day. The gang goes to Ireland. The gang broke D. D Day. Time's up for the gang. Who got D pregnant? The gang goes jihad. The gang replaces D with a monkey. Frank sets sweet D on fire. Bums, making a mess all over the city. The gang goes to a water park. The gang goes on family fight. Mac and Charlie, white trash. Mac and Dennis, manhunters. Charlie Kelly, king of the rats. Frank falls out the window. Paddy's Pub, the worst bar in Philadelphia. Wolf Cola, a public relations nightmare. The gang still in Ireland. The gang solves the gas crisis. The gang finds a dumpster baby. D gives birth. The gang gets quarantined. Reynolds versus Reynolds, the serial defense. Old Lady House, a situation comedy. Mac finds his pride. Dennis Reynolds, an erotic life. McPoyle versus Ponderosa, the trial of the century. The gang carries a corpse up the mountain. Dennis and Dee go on welfare. The gang gets invincible. Charlie work. Sweet Dee gets audited. The gang hits the road. The gang exploits the mortgage crisis. The gang squashes their beefs. The gang gets trapped. The gang dances their asses off. Mac and Dennis buy a timeshare. Frank Reynolds's little beauties. Mac and Dennis break up. The gang reignites the rivalry. Charlie's mum has cancer. The gang beats Boggs. Mac's big break. The gang tries desperately to win an award. The high school reunion part two. Who pooped the bed? The gang dines out. Frank's back in business. Sweet D has a heart attack. Charlie rules the world. The waitress is getting married. The gang buys a boat. The gang goes to the Jersey Shore. The gang group dates. The gang gives Frank an intervention. The gang wrestles for the troops. The gang recycles their trash. Mac and Dennis move to the suburbs. Chardy McDennis, the game of games. The gang misses the boat. The nightman cometh. The gang gets analyzed. The Dennis system 